Gaming. This is giving hand jobs in an Olive Garden parking lot. Fucking suck dicks in an Olive Garden bathroom. Bro, here comes a big hot load of PlayStation 5s. Oh man, it's so thick. Yo, what's up, guys? How's everybody doing? <clears throat> Shit. I'm still sick as fuck, bro. I still went to the gym tonight, and I'm kind of regretting that, bro. Like, I feel like ass. But the gains don't stop, so... Can't take a break. How many rest days you take? Zero. I always go and do something. I don't do the same shit every night, but I'm always in the gym every day, doing something at least. Wish my gym had. Yeah, my old gym had a swimming pool, but I never used it. I always went like after like you know five o'clock at night, so it was closed. Rip. Zero rest days equals more gains. Ah, uh, that's the theory. At least that's what I do. I don't know, man. I don't feel like good unless I go work out. Like I just feel shitty until I go and like work out most nights. Gotta stay consistent, you know? Didn't even get a hit marker? Damn. Workout withdrawals? Eh, I don't even think it's that. It's just you feel lazy and, like, really fucking, like, um, slothy, I guess is a good way to put it. You just feel kind of worthless. Especially, like, on the weekends, man. Like, if I don't get up and go to the gym first thing, like, I'll just, like, fucking lay around and do nothing. And then my whole day is kind of wasted. It's approximately day 9,125 of Griffin being single and lonely and depressed and a loser. Thanks, I'm Key, for keeping track. Headshot? Seriously? Damn, man. Tough crowd. Any FOMO's gem? Huh? Like, fear of missing out at the gem? I don't really fear like missing out on something at the gym it's more of just like I know I need sh I should be in there doing something like I shouldn't just be sitting around doing nothing all day I should at least go work out I spend enough time sitting in a desk so it ain't gonna kill me to go like walk on the treadmill for an hour and like do some fucking you know weights and shit like that if anything it's really good I should be probably even more active than that. <clears throat> Enemy in the area. Oh. 
Like, if you really think about it, like, going to the gym for two hours a night really isn't even a lot of physical activity compared to, like, sitting at your desk for, like, 12 hours a day. So, that should be, like, the bare minimum you go every day. Not a headshot? What? Damn, bro. They really don't want to see me winning. Ready for tomorrow? What's tomorrow? Oh, we got a slut shame on key. If they actually arrest Trump, though, that's only going to help him. That's the thing, dude, is nobody agrees with that shit. You got some crazy fucking dude in New York that thinks he can arrest him, and it's just like, bruh. Not only is it not going to fucking work, but it's going to make the Democrats look insanely fucking crooked. So, it's not going to play well for him. I don't really know why they would go through with it. It's a terrible decision, in my opinion. Finally, I got a headshot. That wasn't a headshot? Dude, I was like aiming at his fucking head. Halfway above it, too. Damn, bro. They really don't want me getting headshots. got YouTube Premium? Yeah, dude, YouTube Premium is worthwhile in my opinion. I mean, I just love the fact that I can listen to shit in the background. That's like the best selling point in my opinion. Because I don't actually like watch YouTube, I mainly just listen to it. When did Optimus start uploading stuff about banks and protests in other countries? I have no idea. Guess he's trying to diversify. Can I couldn't really imagine that there would be a lot of uh, insightful commentary to be had, but I guess good for him for uh, you know going at it.
But see, it's not even the state of New York that's indicting Trump. That's what's wild. It's like some shitty fucking local DA in Manhattan. Like, it's not even the fucking state government. It's like some fucking shitty little local government bullshit artist. Like, it's never gonna fucking stick. It's just some fucking, like, dude trying to flex. Like, ooh, I can get him arrested. Ooh. Give me Twitter followers. Laugh my ass off he started doing more content like that, then had a mental breakdown. Yo, who the fuck was this? Who's having mental breakdowns? Damn. Optimus? Really? What was his mental breakdown over? Timothy Marco with the five. Apparently the FDA wants to make it so cereal companies can't put the word healthy on the boxes. Really fighting the major battles, man. Going after the shit that really matters. Forget the uh, abusive and manipulative drug companies. You know, let's go after fucking cereal. You know, frosted flakes might not be as healthy as they say they are, guys. That's the real battles we need to fight. Bro, spring break is over? I don't get spring break, so... It never began for me. That's what happens when you're old. The only time I get off is, uh, federal holidays. That's about it. Unless I took PTO, which I don't. Mm. That's probably good. That's a long ass gun, bro. Damn. Nope, I've never had jury duty. I would actually like to do it, because you get paid to just go sit in a fucking courtroom. Like, your work still has to pay you. No, like, your job still has to pay you to go to jury duty. That's the thing, man, is like, I think it'd be fun. That shit would be cool. You get to, like, determine somebody's fate. Shit's pretty fire. Especially if you get, like, a homicide or something like that. That'd be interesting. Free my man, he didn't do nothing. with the two I had jury duty waited four hours and then was told it was thrown out and I was paid two dollars oh nice man 
I think you get free uh, lunch too. Like they give you money for lunch or they provide it, which is pretty nice as well. But yeah, like theoretically, if I got jury duty tomorrow, <clears throat> my work would still have to pay me, even though I'm sitting in a courtroom and not at work. So that's pretty fire. I've gotten a couple jury summons, but never had to go. Nice, man. Yeah, I honestly wouldn't mind doing it, but... I mean, obviously, it's not, like, the way I'd want to spend my day, unless it was, like, an interesting case. If it was, like, an interesting, like, murder trial or something like that, I think it'd be fun, personally. It'd be a cool experience. Griffin served on the Derek Chavin trial? Who the fuck is that? I have no idea who that is, bro. I've never had jury duty yet. I haven't even been, like, picked for, like, the pool. I mean, if you want to get out of jury duty, just say, yeah, he's guilty. Sick Griffin Days height. What <laughs> the fuck? I would hate if Griffin was part of my jury. Why is that? Why wouldn't you want me to be part of your jury, man? If you were being convicted of tax fraud, then you would want me on your jury. 
If you were committing a financial crime, I can guarantee you you'd want me on your jury. But, you know, whatever you say. Subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. Uh, Tagger Man with the one month. I got summoned for jury duty once. My manager wrote a letter or a letter to exempt me without me even asking for it, bruh. Damn. <clears throat> That's because they gotta pay for you to go. I think if you're salaried, you still get paid. Like, I know my company, if I have jury duty, I get paid normally. So it's like I showed up to work, but I didn't have to show up. I'm key, you won't get jury duty, bro. In Belarus, they just fucking put a bullet in the back of your head, so... I don't think you have to worry about it. Griffin, would you rather date Riley Reed or Violet Myers? Uh, I'd rather be single. I would just keep on like I'm keeping on right now, bro. I don't need to date either one of those hoes. Christian Mingle? Dude, I remember that fucking website. Is that even still around? I don't feel like those dating sites last. Like, eHarmony I don't think is around anymore, right? I actually know somebody who got married to someone they met on Christian Mingle, which is really fucking funny. Farmers only for you? Hell yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, personally I would not use a dating site, but you know, I guess some people do have success on them. Some people do have success. I just wouldn't try one, personally. Well, dude, public intoxication is a crime and a courtroom is public, so you'd get in trouble for that alone.
Griffin goes on Bumble. Is it like a gay site? Nah, man. I just stick with the uh, OG grinder. But no, I don't use any dating apps, honestly. I have zero dating apps currently. I'm single and don't give a fuck about the mingle, bro. Real talk. IG is a dating app? No, it's not. Bro, Instagram is not a fucking dating app. What the fuck are you on, bro? Damn, bro, I almost fucking choked that so hard. The top 10 people I would interview in the gaming industry? I don't really- I'm gonna be honest, man, there's not very many people in the gaming industry that I actually give a fuck about. Like, I don't find it fascinating to hear, like, game developers talk about developing video games. I'm not, like, starstruck by some fucking dork that works on game development. Like, I don't know. That's like asking a VH- or a VFX artist- what is that fucking title called? VFX artist or whatever the fuck? Like. How did you do the CGI in Captain America? Like, who fucking cares? I don't know, man. That ain't for me. Yeah, the only good interviews are ones where drama goes down. Is there any celebrity that you would be starstruck by? Uh, not really, man. I mean, I'd walk up to him and say, hey, man, I really enjoyed you in whatever movie, but I wouldn't be like, oh, my God. Ah! <clears throat> I mean, they're just people, man. I don't know. Like, sure, they do cool shit, but it's like at the end of the day, they're just another person. Do you watch Mauler or Critical Drinker? No. Have you found a woman yet? I mean, 
I've seen many women, but yeah, I guess. I don't fucking know. What do you mean, have I found a woman yet? To call my girlfriend? No. But have I seen a woman? Yes. I do not need a gamer girl. Fuck that shit. Why are y'all so worried about that shit for me? It's kind of sad. It's sad we want to see you pulling bitches. Damn, man. You just don't want me here. That's what I'm really hearing. Next thing you know, Griffin has a vlogging channel. Oh my god. Not a chance, bro. Not a chance. <clears throat> vlogging is not for me. Yeah, exactly. What the fuck would I even vlog, bro? Today I woke up. I rolled over in my bed, turned on my work laptops. I sat in bed for three hours until my dog licked my hand telling me he needed to go take a piss. So I walk him outside, he takes a piss. I walk back inside. Make sure my laptops have not turned off. Proceed to work until five or six. Then I get off. Either eat dinner or go to the gym for two hours. Come back, take a shower, live stream. After I'm done live streaming, go to sleep. Doesn't that sound exciting to watch? That's a fucking hype ass vlog, right guys? Yeah, there's a 0% chance I could ever fucking vlog. <laughs> I don't ever, like, fucking do anything really that interesting. Like, unless people want to watch, like, a boring fucking life on camera for whatever reason, then there you go. Yeah, if I had a camera on right now, that would literally be the vlog for the day. Like, yeah, guys, sitting here at my desk in front of my computer. 12 hours to go. Nah, vlogging's not easy, bro. There's a million fucking vlog channels on YouTube that don't fucking go anywhere. <clears throat> you gotta have the personality for it. 
you have to have the lack of uh, public shame of like yelling into a camera in front of hundreds of people at a time. And then you actually have to go and do shit that people want to watch. Like, if your day consists of waking up, driving to fucking Chipotle, and playing video games, like, nobody's gonna fucking want to watch that shit. Because they can just do that themselves. You gotta, like, take trips, go do interesting stuff, like, spend a bunch of money, have, like, a friend group around you that you have, like, good, like, interactions and chemistry with. I don't know. You gotta have a busty chick to put in your thumbnails. Ah, oh, shit. Put Brett in your thumbnails? Bro, I'm trying to get views, not scare people away. is like fucking killing me. HTM 101 with the 5 DSP is such a selfish person. He's not just screwing himself, but both Wings and Boogie, his wife especially, since if he dies, she has to pay off his debt. Dude, DSP's ego is just fucking insane. The guy is just fucking wild. Tiger Man with the five, the only vlogging I'd like to see is vlogging in the hood or an equal hellhole. Imagine all the shenanigans that go down. I mean, I guess. I don't know, man. But you can't snitch on camera. Otherwise, you're going to get fucking shot. Especially in the hood, bro. Nobody wants to be documented. I live in the hood? No. Unfortunately not. <clears throat> I live in an apartment building.
three more. Then I can wage quit this map, too. Dual incentive. Oh, nope. Two more. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Griffin's moving to Detroit? I'd have to get paid a fuck ton of money to do that. Britt would be popular in the hood being a snow bunny and everything. Griffin pulls up to Georgia or Atlanta? Well, Atlanta is in Georgia, bro. That'd be the same thing. I liked Atlanta, honestly. I would go back. It was nice. never live in the hood. The fuck? The whole point of working hard is so you don't have to live in the fucking hood. Timothy Marco with the two. Griffin's moving west. Garfield Park, Chicago. What the fuck? Dude, I am not going to fucking Chicago. Jesus Christ. How to get shot 101. Move to Chicago. Yeah, that's what's wild is I knew a bunch of people who were on my previous project who like moved to Chicago of their own free will. And I'm just like, bro, why? Are you like trying to die an early death or some shit? Like, what the fuck is the reasoning for that? Baltimore is a shithole. these guys man this shit's so fucking lame I hate this map all right one more and then I can wage quit Like, this map honestly wouldn't be that bad if it wasn't so huge. Like, if it was about half the size, it honestly wouldn't be that annoying. But it's just way too big. It takes forever to find anybody. Weaponized autism with the 149. Nice cock, bro. You're broke! You're fucking poor! Oh, here we go. Fuck. Damn it. Couldn't get my gun up fast enough. I was like, damn, my reprieve is here. 
I just need one more fucking headshot, dude. And then I'm free. Nope. Not a headshot. There we go. Alright, I'm definitely done. Wage quit. Wage quit. I style it with the five. Do they still have human feces in the streets of California? Absolutely. They have an app that tracks it. Fun fact. In San Francisco. You can download an app where you can report shit wads on the street. Genocide King revived with the one? Uh oh. You're broke! You're fucking poor! Sounds like you should be shitting on the streets of California. Play Halo Infinite now or else? Um. Open your wallet and give me all of your monies! Yeah, Britt, Trevor's awful in fucking uh, GTA 5. I killed his ass off at the end. Oops, spoiler. Get wrecked. I hated Trevor. The only character I liked was Michael. That was it. Trevor I hated. The other guy, I can't remember his name. He was just kind of boring. And then... Michael I actually liked. He had like the actual personality of the bunch that wasn't oh I'm a fucking crackhead. Ha 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 I'm so funny. Yeah Franklin there you go. But I'm gonna be honest I'm not really a big GTA campaign fan anyway so GTA campaigns don't really do it for me very often. GTA 4 is like the only campaign I would say that I really enjoyed. GTA 5's campaign was okay. I don't think it was anything special, though. It's just like, alright. Ooh. My Pokemans are gonna be here Thursday. These are very valuable ones. I paid like 700 bucks a piece for them. It was too good of a deal to pass up. Weaponized autism with a two, do you have that yee yee ass haircut? Wait, what? I need to get a haircut, so I don't have any haircut right now. I need to get like an inch taken off the top, bro. This shit's getting long. Get some my eye. I have to wear like a hat at the gym now because my fucking hair like gets in my face because it gets like sweaty and shit. Which is annoying. Dude, I am not growing my hair out. No thanks. Timothy Marco with the two. What I like about GTA is the satire. Yeah, I mean, I guess that is kind of like the main appeal, but I don't know. I just, like, the campaign structures to me are really boring. 
Not to mention the gameplay of GTA is not good in my opinion. I've never really liked the actual gameplay of GTA. Like the driving always feels like really subpar. The like shooting relies way too much on like lock on basically with like the fucking auto aim. I don't the control schemes weird like there's just not really much about the GTA gameplay that I enjoy. But that goes kind of for all Rockstar games. Their gameplay is really dated. Yeah, Saints Row is way more fun to me than GTA. Easily. Yeah, Saints Row 3 is my favorite, easily. That game is fucking great. I thoroughly enjoyed Saints Row 3. That was a fun fucking game. It's a shame the franchise really went downhill afterwards, though. It is kind of a shame, like, the franchise took a massive fucking nosedive after 3. I just wish I didn't feel like fucking shit. This sucks. you got the girl with the hipster glasses who can hack stuff in your saints row is that what you look like for it are you the hipster girl with glasses that can hack stuff uh, well, who am i kidding you can't hack but anyway is that like the aesthetic you go for There's like some shit going around, I feel like, sickness wise. You don't wear glasses, so you just put on like the ones with the clear lenses for the aesthetic. I see. Fair enough, you're like Dreamcast guy. with the five tumblr moment the only song i identify with is boulevard of broken Tr oh my god that shit's corny i always hated that song 
But then again, I hate most Green Day music. Well, actually, I hate all of it. There's not a song that I can think of that I like. Weaponized autism with the two. Be careful. Brit has green hair and a nose ring. Oh shit, bro. I better go buy the engagement ring. That's like my dream. Holy fuck, dude. You generation with the two. Are we gonna watch Yong tonight? Yup. Agreed. We are going to. Dude, I don't understand how anyone listens to Nirvana. That shit's so fucking boring. But then again, rock music, in my opinion, is really fucking lame. Nirvana is fire? Yeah, if you light a dumpster on fire, sure. Bro, that thing was so far up. Holy fuck. I don't listen to lo-fi hip-hop retards. I just put this shit on because it's like neutral background music that's not going to get my stream claimed. Thank you very much. I have to operate within the bounds of the law here. If it was up to me, I would just put my fucking Spotify liked playlist on and then just be good. But after a while, you get in trouble with YouTube for doing that. Like, I would just listen to my own music, like shit. Griffin listens to music about boots, cowboy hats, women, and beer. Um, no, that's Brit, bro. I'm pretty sure Brit's the Taylor Swift fan, not me. Dude, I listen to the lo-fi rush music. That shit's so good. I love it. Listen to 2010's dubstep? Uh, no thank you. Bro, I'm gonna put on some Skrillex. Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. Damn right. Butch is toxic with the 14 months. Everyone's hating on Sneeko for something that would have been written off as satire in 2016. 
Monkey Jones and Xbox Addiction said way worse stuff. But dude, the thing is, is, he's not making a joke. Like, he's literally the type of motherfucker that lets his girlfriend fuck other dudes. Like, that's not a joke. He literally is a gay fucking twink model. On top of that, he literally told a story about how a dude's fucking eyelashes were tickling his nuts while he was having sex with his girlfriend. Like, bruh, that shit ain't satire. That's like a real-life account of his sex life. He's a fucking degenerate. I'm on your six. Like, he's gonna sit there and preach about, like, you know, male value, you know, how women are inferior, blah, 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 but then he's gonna let his girlfriend go and fuck other guys? And then stick with her? Like, bruh. So much for being alpha. <laughs> the butch is toxic with the two. I meant the slurs and the gun. Oh, I don't think anybody actually cares that he waved the gun around. He just looked like a fucking gay little sprite, you know? Dancing around with his little fucking, like, Twizzler arms. Like a fucking... Dude, he looked like that meme of Bottom G. Like, the guy that dresses up like Andrew Tate and does, like, the gay fucking dances and shit in public. Like, that's what he looked like when he was dancing around with that little Glock. Like, he looked like an absolute fucking femboy. I don't even think that's an issue, honestly. He just looked dumb. Like, who fucking cares if he shows a gun on stream? Ooh. It's a gun. How scary. But nah, he just... He looks like an owl, man. Timothy Marco with the two. Diablo Elite is saying two was peak. Two looks like absolute fucking garbage graphically. Those old boomers can kick fucking sand. Because that's what they're going to turn into eventually. Diablo 3 was great. I love Diablo 3. Gamers are mad? That's right, Brit. You wouldn't understand. You're not one of us. You generation, do not entertain that question. Brit knows what femboys are. Weaponized autism with the two shooters peaked with Quake. That's right, man. ADS ruined first-person shooters. Alright, you fucking old pieces of shit. Then go play your fucking boomer. Oh, wait, they're all dead. Dude, if a game is not pretty to look at, I don't want to look at it while I'm playing it. Like, I don't care how fun a game is, if the art style is ugly, I don't want to look at it for a prolonged period of time. Like, Final Fantasy VII, love that game back in the day, but I would never replay that shit because, holy fuck, the graphics are terrible. Griffin feels that way about his women. What women? Do you know what's great about nostalgia with Final Fantasy VII? You can play the remake instead. And it's better in literally every single way.
I watched Wings of Redemption and DSP play the remake, then I played it for myself. The game is absolute fire. I need to finish it on PC as well. Yeah, I beat Hogwarts. I beat it on stream. Yeah, Cloud cross dresses at the Honey Bee. I remember DSP got really uncomfortable during it. No, I don't think Cloud's gay, man, because the original ending... <coughs> A Final Fantasy 7 was literally supposed to be like after the credits it was going to show Cloud and Tifa waking up in like a chocobo stall walking out and you know you can kind of assume what happened but that was the original ending of Final Fantasy 7 is after the credits like a little fucking cutscene would play and it would be Cloud and Tifa walking out of like a chocobo stall you know the next morning, so to say. Yeah, let's just say he made those titties clap. about Aerith? Aerith dies. <laughs> so unless Cloud is a fucking necrophiliac or whatever the fuck the uh, term is, you know, I don't really think him and Aerith have a uh, future unfortunately. But well, it'll be interesting to see if they kill off Aerith in the remake because they have a chance to retcon that. <clears throat> Weaponized Autism with the two. I never got into RPGs. I played Skyrim and Mario RPGs. Yeah, I never got into, like, the super fucking autistically detailed RPGs, like, Elder Scrolls I enjoyed, Fallout 4, I guess you could call that an RPG. I'm sure a lot of people, no, it's not. Uh, Witcher 3 I liked, um, Fable, the Mass Effect games were fun. But yeah, I've never really been into, like, the fucking autistically detailed RPGs. I've always liked the RPGs that still have, like, more of a gameplay focus than anything else. Square Enix needs to hurry up on 7 Remake. I agree, but I think it's coming at either the end of the year or early next year, so that's good. The Butch is toxic with the two. Can we do a YouTube nostalgia stream? Like, what do you mean by that? I mean, I guess. It's not impossible, I just don't really know what you mean by a YouTube nostalgia stream. Yeah, did anybody else think it was kind of an L that Sephiroth only had one wing, bro? That always bothered me. It's like, bro, why don't you have two? It's not symmetrical. It's like a fucking half-breed. Yeah, I really wanted Sephiroth to win, though. Like, that's the thing, man, is he was based. Sephiroth was cool. He wanted to become God. Like, that's pretty fire. I see no problem with that motive. I would have helped him out.
Yeah, I'm gonna be honest though, Sephiroth's theme from Final Fantasy VII is really mid and extremely overrated. It's way overhyped. You have definitely heard Sephiroth's theme. Almost everyone has probably heard it, they just don't know what it is. It's like one of those really iconic gaming soundtracks. People use it in a lot of shit. If I played it, I guarantee y'all would be like, oh, yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that shit before. Here. I guarantee you this shit will sound familiar. Just wait, this is not the iconic part. Just wait. Oh, this is the fucking Smash Brothers version. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. It's the same fucking tune. This is the part I guarantee you've heard somewhere. calling cap on that shit. Y'all have heard that before. I know for a fact more of y'all have heard that shit and you just don't want to admit it. But great bait. That's like one of those really iconic gaming soundtracks. Personally, I don't like it. I think it's pretty trash. I need to go take a shit real quick. I'll be back in a few minutes. Have fun, everyone. I'll be back in a few.
all right guys i am back holy shit dude that was awful Dude, I'm in the mood to listen to this now. Birdo is not trans, bro. Nintendo doesn't do all that shit. <clears throat> Why did you say I main Birdo all of, of all things? Um, just look at the character, Brit. Dude, I feel like I lost like four pounds. I'm not even joking, and that shit was awful. That was like literally terrible. Hopefully not, man, because it's just going to be like when you have like the fucking uh, waterfall effect when you're sick. That's what round two was. <laughs> Fuck. It stopped right at the good part. This is some GameCube music, man. This is classic shit. This is the uh, Mario Double or Mario Kart Double Dash uh, Circuit theme, I think is what it's called. Oh, this thing shoots fast. Fuck, man. Alright. Ooh, nice. I love doing that. Oh, shit, dude. Yeah, my stomach is, like, rocked right now, guys. Holy fuck, man. Shit sucks. Oh, I hate being sick. Fucking terrible. Ginger ale? Dude, I think sugar would make it worse. I haven't had like a sugary soda in so long that it probably would make it worse.
Let's see, weaponized autism with the two. I thought this came from an 80s horror movie. Oh, the Sephiroth thing? Yeah. I mean, it's it's really cringe in my opinion. I don't like it. Daryl's in with the two. Let's watch your very first video. I mean, nothing's stopping you, man. Go ahead. Timothy Marco with the two. Birdo was added to Mario Kart 8 with the expansion pack. Hell yeah, the premium Zuck is back in action. Fire. I'm dying on my own stream? I don't think so. Well, I mean, I guess we're all dying, right? Ha ha ha. So fucking edgy and relatable. And Oski Woski with the five. Nah, 3DS Rainbow Road fucking slabs. Put that one on next. Yeah, we can. Give me a second. I'll pull it up. Oh my god. Dude, I'm like feeling like I'm dying over here. You gotta walk your dog. Have fun, Brit. Sleep well. Weaponized Autism with the two. The Wii Sports OST is legendary. I agree, man. Alright, so Mario Kart. Kart Rainbow. Dude, I will never in my entire life drink Pepto-Bismol. That shit looks so nasty. That stuff looks absolutely disgusting. I don't have any of those. They never really worked for me. I've had them before. I need to get a digital copy of Mario Kart because I don't know where my fucking games for my Switch are. They're in like a case somewhere and I don't know where the case is. So all my physical games, I have no idea where the fuck they are, see? Just another inconvenience of physical media. Whereas if I would have just bought all this shit digital, I could just download it on whatever console I wanted. <clears throat> Without having to wonder where the fuck the cartridge is. Common Physical Media L. Griffin is the next Sneeko. I don't have a girlfriend to cuck me, bro. Sorry. I can't be. Y'all always say it's impossible for me to get a girlfriend, so I can't be the next Sneeko. Because unless I get a girlfriend to cuck me, then I'll never become him. Bro, that didn't kill him? Should. Yes, you can't get a girlfriend. Like, are we wrong? I mean, maybe not. I gotta try. Then I'll let you know if you're right or wrong. Oh, shit.
I'll never be as alpha as Sneeko. That's right. I'll never taste another man's cum when I eat out my girlfriend. What a shame. I'll never get a protein shake piping hot out of the pussy. Oh, what a shame, guys. If only. I would say Double Dash is probably my favorite Mario Kart game, but I mean Mario Kart 8 basically has all the content now, so not really a hard pick. It's like asking what your favorite Smash is, obviously it's Smash Ultimate because it has all the content. Yeah, Wings isn't dumb, I feel like. I mean, he is dumb, but he's nowhere near as bad as DSP. DSP is on a different level of fucking horrible. Smash is best to play in bed. I wouldn't know. I only play video games in my gaming chair because it directly affects performance. Technically and gameplay-wise. Weaponized Autism with the 2, playing Civ 6, help me, I cannot get off. Uh, try beating off, bro. Timothy Marco with the 2, this sounds like a Jehovah's Witness song, the fuck? What does that even sound like? No, dude, the best, um... The best 3DS music is this. This shit's just good background noise. Shiny hunting at the same time now, guys. I'm multitasking. I'm 210 hours into the shiny hunt and still nothing. This shit's wild, bro. Absolutely fucking wild. Pika Blue? You mean Meryl? Yeah, like literally my playtime in Shining Pearl when I started the uh, Shiny Hunt was 20 hours. Now I'm up to 230 hours. Like, I'm not even joking. That's how long I fucking spent trying to get this damn Palkia. 
Shit's AIDS, dude. Absolute fucking AIDS. Oh my god. My stomach is fucked. What the fuck just happened? Friendly cruise missile deployed. Yeah, this is like the one time I'm shiny hunting too. After this, I don't think I'm ever gonna do it again. I just wanted to say I did it once. I didn't think it was actually gonna take me this long, but here we are. Yeah, I got a shiny Lucario in Pokemon Scarlet, which was really hype, but that was like a random chance encounter. It was just like roaming around in a cave, and I saw it. I was like, oh shit, shiny Lucario. So I call it that. That was pretty neat, which Lucario is one of my uh, personal favorite Pokemon, so I thought that was pretty cool. I already showed the Lucario. I've already shown y'all the Lucario before. Well, the thing is, it's like, the only other Pokemon I would actually want a shiny of is like, an evolution, which that's pretty easy to do, I don't really think that's that special. But Mew and Palkia are my two favorite Pokemon, so, you can't really shiny hunt Mew, so Palkia is the next best option. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm Key. You're an expert at spotting Down Syndrome because you look at it every morning when you walk in front of a mirror. No, if I like the most generic Pokemon, I'd be like, My favorite Pokemon are Pikachu and Charizard. Or Mewtwo. Or, um... Hmm... Rayquaza... An evolution, those are pretty generic choices. Lugia is pretty generic.
Aw, oh, that didn't even kill him. I don't think Mew is like a uh, super popular Pokemon. I don't even think he's in the top 10, but I'm not sure. I've never looked it up. You can always check. Or I guess I could. Let me see. Let's see. Top 10 most popular Pokemon. So the most searched for Pokemon are Charizard, Gardevoir, that is disturbing, Sylveon, Lucario, Gengar, Umbreon, Garchomp, Mimikyu, Rayquaza, and Greninja. That's one list. Let's see. 15 most popular Pokemon of 2020. Lugia is number 15, Toxicity, or Toxtricity is number 14, Bulbasaur 13, Tyranitar 12, Dragapult 11, Gengar 10, Gardevoir 9, again, that's very disturbing, Rayquaza 8, Garchomp 7, Sylveon 6, Umbreon 5, Charizard 4, Mimikyu 3, Lucario 2, and Greninja 1. Yeah, I don't think Mew is considered to be, like, a super popular Pokemon, honestly. Like, his alt arts are not very expensive at all. I think Greninja's trash, personally. Yeah, Scizor is a cool Pokemon. I have a really cool Scizor card, actually. Um, rockets. This card's pretty sick. This is kind of a shitty picture, but it gives you a general idea. It's a pretty cool card, though. Scissor me timbers, scissor me sisters. So gay. Dying caught on stream, something like that. I'm dying of the Kung Flu. 
slowly but surely. <clears throat> I guess we're all dying though, right? So, YOLO swag. Maybe it's just lung cancer? I hope not, because I've never smoked, so that'd be kind of disappointing. Sounds like I need a Latina mommy. Yeah. I need her to sit on my face, bro. Wait, sorry. I didn't mean to say that out loud. Lol, bingo. The fuck? Apparently Griffin is dying of Candace. Yeah. Can this dick fit in your mouth? Ha 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 ha. I wish they would bring back shipment 24-7, like shit, that would be a lot easier to level the shotgun up on. Than these normie maps. Griffin wants some Candace Owen, oh, no, I can assure you I don't, bro. I can assure you I do not. That bitch is a grifter. Bro, what the fuck am I stuck on? What the fuck was that shit? Dude, I just couldn't be around somebody who makes politics such an important part of their existence. That shit would be boring. They'd be like, no, we can't go there. They said something bad about conservatives on Twitter. It's like, bro, fuck off. That shit would be so obnoxious. I hate that shit. It's like, we can't go there. Like, we can't go to Chick-fil-A. They don't support gay marriage. It's like, bruh, I don't give a fuck. They have good chicken. The only way Popeyes is better than Chick-fil-A is if you don't have a Chick-fil-A, or it's Sunday. That's the only day of the week that Popeyes is better than Chick-fil-A, Sunday. That's it.
Yeah, Popeye's biscuits are the best way to choke. Those things are nasty. Weaponized Autism with a 2, I believe in Zaxby's and Chick-fil-A Supremacy. Those are definitely the two best chicken places, hands down. I've never had Cane's though, so I can't say about that, but... Zaxby's and Chick-fil-A are like almost impossible to beat. <clears throat> I'm really sorry that y'all think Popeyes and KFC is real fried chicken. Like, y'all need to go to the south and go, like, have some real fucking fried chicken if you think KFC is good. I'm sorry. Like, that's really sad. That's really fucking sad. Yeah, the best, like, chain chicken place is churches, without, like, a fucking doubt. But KFC is terrible for fried chicken. Like, y'all are really missing out, dude. Go to, like, fucking Georgia and go to, like, an actual local fried chicken place and order, like, actual, like, authentic fried chicken, not fucking KFC, and you will never want to eat, like, nasty-ass KFC again. Like, y'all just haven't had real fried chicken if you think fucking KFC is good. Bro, the grocery store Publix has better fried chicken than KFC. Like, KFC is really nothing special. At all. It's just everywhere. And it's not even cheap. KFC got really expensive recently. Yeah, KFC is more popular outside of the U.S. than in the U.S., which is kind of funny, especially in Asian countries. I'd kill for a box of church's biscuits. Damn, man. You know who has really good biscuits? Bojangles, man. Those are fucking fire biscuits. That's another place I forget exists. Dude, I used to get the Bojangles um, steak biscuit or whatever the fuck it was called. That thing was so good. I haven't had that shit in like probably five or six years minimum. But yeah, Bojangles is really good. Their biscuits are fire. Uh, Crytex with the five, would you say the same thing with the quartering? He could be a grifter like other political ch Yeah, probably. I mean, I would probably say quartering more often than not falls into that category. Microsoft. I'm an Ellie! Uh, ah! <laughs> 
There's a KFC 300 feet from your apartment, bruh. You're gonna be 300 pounds if you go there too much. Bro, I used to have a Zaxby's like two minutes down the street from my old college apartment. That shit was lit. I would just go down there and like sit and work. So I could get out of my dorm. I could just go sit in Zaxby's and like work on my laptop. It was nice. Unlimited refills. But yeah, my favorite thing from Zaxby's is the uh, fried house salad. Like, that thing is just so good, bro. They put, like, these little crunchy onion things on top. I don't know what the fuck they're called. But they're, like, little fucking fried onions. And they're just, like... That's, like, probably the best part of the whole fucking thing. Those things are crazy good. I don't know, bro. I love Zaxby's salad. And they give you, like, this Texas toast, too, which is, like, really fucking fire. Yeah, Zaxby's is a, uh, I think they only go as far west as Texas. I think Zaxby's, like, Kansas and Texas are, like, as far west as they go. They aren't on the west coast. They're just kind of like a southeastern kind of thing. And then Canes is more midwest to west coast. Weaponized autism with the two. I work at Zaxby's. Most people remove the onions. They're L's then. That's a fat fucking L, bro. Do most people get rid of the coleslaw when they get the plate? Because I used to do that. I don't know why, but like for some reason, every time I'd get it, it was like hot. And like, there's nothing more disgusting than hot coleslaw. That shit is gross. So I'd always sub it out for the fries and then never eat them. <laughs> Dude, that's something I cannot eat a lot of, is, like, french fries. I don't know what it is, dude, but, like, if I eat a couple french fries, I literally feel like my stomach is gonna, like, burst. It's weird. It makes me feel, like, so fucking bloated eating french fries. I think it's because of all the grease and shit. So, if I eat french fries, like, I'll have, like, three, and then that's it. No, it's not the starch, bro, because I can eat, like, a whole-ass baked potato, and it's not a big deal. It's just the fact that it's fried. Whatever it is with french fries and how they're, like, fried, and all the oil, I'm guessing it absorbs. It just, like, fucks with my stomach. Because I can eat, like, a whole baked potato, no problem. Mashed potatoes, no problem, but it's just french fries. Makes me feel like somebody pumped up my stomach with, like, fucking helium or some shit. Yeah, so I usually skip fries. I don't really eat them. New generation of the five raising canes is absolutely mid. Chicken has no flavor whatsoever. Rip. Yeah, I've never tried it. I just know everybody dips it and like drowns it in the fucking sauce cup. I've seen that. Where you get like the sauce and like the cup and you dip the whole fucking chicken finger in there. Maybe that's why, because it has no flavor.
Chick-fil-A sauce does not deserve... I don't like Chick-fil-A sauce. I like Chick-fil-A's barbecue sauce, and that's it. But, like, Chick-fil-A sauce itself is kind of mid. It's just, like, slightly more seasoned honey mustard. Like, that's about it. Yeah, I don't need to use sauce with Chick-fil-A half the time. Their chicken tastes really good. I don't really ever use sauce when I get Chick-fil-A. But if I do, I'll get the barbecue sauce. I buy Chick-fil-A uh, barbecue sauce for other foods. Like, I buy these, uh turkey meatballs or whatever the fuck at the grocery store and I'll like put some barbie or I'll get like one of the little packets of barbecue sauce and dip the meatballs in there that's fire but yeah Chick-fil-A if I ever order it I don't really feel the need to use the sauce on the chicken because it's already seasoned pretty well I'm dead. Yup, I knew that was coming. Oh, fuck. Took out two people. I think it's cool how they added that mechanic, though. It's neat. I like it. Chipotle does not need ground beef. Just order the barbacoa, man. That shit's way better than ground beef. Ground beef is garbage meat. Literally. It's meat you can't sell until you grind it up and put it in a package. Ground beef is disgusting. Like, nine times out of ten, man. Like, ground beef is like all the shit that they can't actually sell. They just grind it up and put it in a fucking package and say, here's some beef. It's like fucking intestinal walls and shit like that. Thinking canes is for rich people? Oh my god. That'd be kind of sad if that was the case, man. That shit's not even expensive, right? I know people think Five Guys is for rich people. I'm like, what the fuck? It's like 20 bucks, dude. It ain't that big a deal. <clears throat> oh no, I guess I'm just not out here struggling, bro. $20 for one person? Jeez, that's not even a lot, man. That's nothing where I live. If you go to a restaurant, it's like 40 bucks a person minimum.
My burrito bowl was 20 bucks. What a Chipotle. Yeah, that's about right. I don't know. I think Chipotle is worth the price, honestly, though. It's good food for the most part. Like, it's good quality. New generation with the two ban a god emperor. He said southern chicken bad. Yeah, he's just retarded, man. He plays Java Edition Minecraft, so he's special. We can't bully retards. There's this ramen place, like, there's a bunch of them in my area, it's called, like, Jinya or whatever the fuck. And, like, dude, the ramen is so expensive, it's like 25 bucks a fucking bowl for some fucking soup and noodles. They barely put any fucking meat or anything in there either, it's like, bro, what the fuck? I don't understand that shit. Like, fucking noodles and soup should not be 25 fucking dollars. the Naruto headband? Nah, bro. I had the Naruto headband with the line cut through it because I was part of the Kotsky. But no, I never had a Naruto headband. One of my friends did, though. Shit was kind of cringe. I've never been a fan of dressing up. Like, honestly, I've never enjoyed Halloween. I've never enjoyed putting on a costume. That's never been my thing. Yeah, that's what I had tonight was some Campbell's fucking tomato soup, bro. Healthy. <clears throat> but it also felt good on my throat, so... You generation of the five, my friend dressed up as Nine Tailed Fox Naruto in Walmart. So, cr oh my god. Did he have the fucking opening song playing as he walked around? That'd be fucking baller if he did. But, you generation, this isn't really helping your uh, case of not being an Otaku Daikin fan. Because now we know you hang out with weebs.
Dude, I think your generation is God Howard's alt. Honestly. It all seems to add up. It all seems to add up. If I put on a werewolf mask for a violet, wait, I put on a werewolf mask for a violet crime once, nice one. <coughs> Holy fuck, dude. Wish I could just speak. Shit is AIDS. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm not really a big fan of playing dress up. That shit's kind of cringe. That ain't really an activity that I'm down with, personally. But, to each their own. I was the kid that would always dress up for Halloween when it came time at school as an adult, and I would just wear normal clothing. <clears throat> that was me. I would just wear like a normal pair of pants and like a fucking shirt and then if somebody asked me, what are you? I'd be like, an adult. She a 10, but she thinks Santa's real? Well, I'm key, then you're a fucking pedophile. DJ Aftershock with a 2, found out Lucas YouTube got hacked for a second. Wait, really? Damn, man. Motherfucker needs to stop opening those sus emails. Wow. That's a fat L.
Oh, I didn't get it. Shit. How the fuck did I do the best in the lobby kills wise with this shitty ass gun, bro? Here we go, guys. Does it suck? Diablo 4 beta reveal. What's up, Gabe? Rooster Cast guy Whatever here. the fuck Talk it's called. Ugh. <clears throat> Talking today about Diablo 4 because I have been playing a ton of what a the shock. New closed beta that's taking place this weekend. In fact, I've already put 10 hours into it in just the first day. I've almost hit max level. I've reached the actual physical limits of the map itself. I've cleared a bunch of dungeons and I've even tested a bunch of co-op. And I want to talk about the goods and the bads, the positives and the negatives, because as fun as this game is, it does have some things that deeply concern me. Like what, you're supporting such an evil company? Like that t-shirt that you bought? Oh my god, it's just fucking hilarious how quick the fucking script changes. I'm boycotting Activision Blizzard. I played a ton of Diablo 4. Let's talk about that. Hi, if you could like this video... He even got that Diablo 4 tattoo. ...and subscribe if you haven't already. Now, normally, in these style of videos, I like to start off with the goods, because, I mean, this is a game that I feel like is going to be a huge bestseller for Blizzard, and additionally, it is fun to play, but when it comes to the downsides of it, there is a major issue that I feel like people are going to need to discuss. This is always online. Uh, <gasps> it needs an Oh my god. Connection. In fact, you are perpetually connected to the Blizzard servers. Holy shit, dude. You have to be connected to the internet? Holy crap. In fact, it doesn't seem like you can really even play this by yourself. This game introduces a completely new concept that I've never seen before, but I want to call it living world experience. So when you log in, you don't really choose single player or multiplayer. Instead, you just drop onto the map, you make your character, and you start to explore. But while you're going through dungeons or doing different random quests that pop up, you will occasionally see other players just running around the map. What's they can wrong with that? Help you out. So even though they're not directly in your party, they can really assist you in some very hairy situations against tough elites. Now, when this works, I think it is actually quite glorious. I've already made some friends and talked to them in voice chat because the Diablo community is just so nice. But the downside of this is since it is always online and perpetually connected, <gasps> that means that the server capacity is finite. There was a two hour login queue. Yeah, that's just for the fucking beta. Those server queues always go away. Yesterday. Yes, you heard me correctly. When the beta initially launched, I just booted it up on my PlayStation 5. I tapped X to log in, expecting to jump straight into the action. And instead, I had to sit there staring at the login screen for two hours before the game even began. Now, I was able to play the Resident Evil 4 remake because I'm working on that review, so it's not like I was completely bored, but this kind of sucks. I mean, imagine the soccer dads and stuff that don't have 10 what? hours a day to play video games. Dude, soccer dads? Oh my god. I guess this is the new age fucking gamer, bro. It's not the soccer mom that sits at home all day and takes the kids to sports practice. 
It's now the stay-at-home dad who doesn't have a fucking job and just wastes his whole fucking life playing video games. It's like I do. That two-hour login queue was especially painful because there were random disconnects. There is a lot of people yesterday who took off work and ended up sitting in queue for five or six hours just to play a decent chunk of the game itself. But let's actually talk about how this plays. So I just want to point something out to you guys real quick. Look at this thing. This is a gamer girl, bro. Whenever someone um, uses the term my partner, run. Run. Run for the fucking hills. It's not worth it. If your girlfriend refers to you as her partner, dump that bitch on sight, motherfuckers. That is a major red flag. Five or six hours just to play a decent chunk of the game itself. But let's actually talk about how this plays. So for this first beta, we have access to... Why? Because it gives off major... Hi, I'm a liberal. Oh, I want to be your friend. That's why. Three of the five classes. You can play as the barbarian, who's like the heavy weapons expert, the person that can use axes and blades and really <laughs> jump around the map. There's the rogue, whose speciality is basically traps, poisons, bows, being able to really assassinate these demonic targets. And the character I decided to play as, which was actually the very interesting sorcerer. Now, this is a spell slinger <clears throat> who specializes in three elemental types, lightning magic, fire magic, and ice magic. When I first went into this... I wish they would bring the Crusader back. I liked playing as the Crusader in Diablo 3. Beta, I really wasn't sure what to expect when it came to balancing. I mean, in this, you can only play the first 25 levels. It seems like max level in this game is going to be 50. I was able to play up to level 25. But what I really loved most about Diablo 4 is that it really feels like every specialization is yeah i sound extremely healthy right now definitely not like i'm dying great no matter how you build your character they feel fantastic like initially yeah, when do. i first started playing i went purely fire i learned to just shoot blow torches out of my freaking hands and i sent people back to the fiery depths of hell i got these interesting talents that made it where i could just channel a huge laser beam of fire and it would pierce enemies so i treated it like a magma lava shotgun and i was loving that for a long time you know about four or five hours into it i decided to sort of switch gears and go more towards an ice bullets spec I have this ability called Ice Shards, which does this single target damage, but definitely feels like something that's made for burning down bosses. I also got Frost Nova, which allowed me to freeze everybody around me every 15 seconds. And then you could even specialize, which a bunch of passive bonuses. So I got a skill where if somebody was frozen, they take additional damage. Ooh. But what's most fun about Diablo 4 is that you start to to get different items with unique abilities on them stuff that's going to boost the heck out of your power to electricity or fire or frost so you end up trying out those skills more at first i completely dismissed electricity it felt like the skills just weren't particularly powerful but then i discovered a skill called chain lightning this shoots a tiny spark towards my enemies but then it can bounce between different foes now initially i was like oh, okay that's kind of neat but then i started to unlock passive bonuses that made it where it would actually have a higher chance to crit for each person it a jumped crit to. Hit? or if it jumps back to me and then hits them a second time it does a huge boost of bonus damage so now 
the way I started to play my character is I would run into a group of enemies, shock them, and then let it bounce off me and just start to liquefy even level 20 elites. D4 already feels like the kind of game where you get excited with every single new talent point going into the skill trees and just testing God, that out skill tree looks what terrible. does this combination of abilities do? Why doesn't it take up the whole fucking screen? The highest damage That's per awful, second. That's awful, man. Now, additionally, I like the way that the skill trees work it's cool that you can just reset it whenever you want for incredibly cheap it charges you like a tiny bit of in-game gold to redo your talent points but i mean it's literally pennies it doesn't even matter but it's cool that you can't just test out all right what if i go full-blown fire mage what if i go full-blown ice mage it feels good to try and test out the limits of each of the characters saying okay which specializations will work best or which moods will actually fit my team so during the online play this is probably what really intrigued me the most is you can when you see people roaming around in town i decided to just join a random clan and start to team up with them a and clan. when you have a uh -oh. party of people you get an experience bonus it subtly encourages you to mow down people even faster there's even these different class quests where each person can unlock a new like enchantment slot which basically gives you a unique super spell that you can make I think it's cool that I ended up doing the full barbarian quest line with one friend. I did the full assassin rogue quest line with one friend, and then they helped me out doing my sorceress quests. It was so incredibly fun. The built-in existing community, the people... You got kicked out of your Destiny 2 clan? That's because you fucking suck, bro. ...that are excited for Diablo, that are playing Diablo. I mean, I'm actually just so fascinated to level up every single character, to play a hardcore character, which is a thing where when your character dies, they get deleted. <gasps> Already just tinkering that sounds with the fucking itemization awful. and the crafting systems, Diablo 4 feels incredibly deep, but it also feels a bit like an MMORPG. Now, to me, I love MMOs, so I'm completely on board for that. I have literally over 10,000 hours in World of Warcraft, and I'm not proud to say that, but I mean, I've got hundreds and hundreds of hours of Final Fantasy XIV and stuff. So seeing Diablo kind of shift towards an MMO focus, I'm not completely against the reason why it switched to that MMO focus is because Lost Ark is doing so fucking well, man. That game is, like, crazy popular. Let's see what it's at. Lost Ark is really good, though. I wish I had more time to play it. Yeah, 72,000 people playing right now. Lost Ark is really popular. <clears throat> against that. Now, the reason I say this feels like an MMO is the perpetual existing community. Those people that are just running around, that are looking to party up, that were trying to get that next big boss down. The developers have even triggered these weird, like, timed world event bosses where a super baddie will show up and people a have to A super baddie? Oh, shit, bro. Say no more. At a particular time to fight it. That, to me, definitely feels like Raid Knight in a normal MMORPG. A lot of the crafting systems and stuff, uh, you can actually find very good items. Oh, yeah. Speaking of MMOs, too, I did this. I got this shit installed, so I need to play it at some point. Maybe I'll play some of it tomorrow if I have some downtime. But you can also dismantle stuff and upgrade a current piece you enjoy or take a particular elemental type or a bonus off one piece of gear and then imprint it onto a different piece of gear. The level of customization here definitely feels more like a MMO for better or for worse. If you're looking for a game that can suck you... Daryl Zone with a two, rip your Diablo 4 tattoo arm off, Dreamcast guy. We'll have to see, man. If more breast milk gets stolen, he might have to. ...win for months and months and months. That's definitely what this is trying to... A baddie, you mean? Like a gamer girl? Shut the fuck up, man. I'm tired of being alone. ...be. 
they have already said they're kind of pushing back some of the biggest pieces of Diablo 4 to try and make them as post-launch content. Two major things they've already pushed back to post-release content is item sets, which are incredibly important to end game content, and runes, which is basically spell crafting. It really seems like they're trying to already set the stage for this being a six month grind fest of log in, do your daily quests, complete these bonuses to try and unlock that next big chunk of cash. I'm definitely open-minded to this, but I am very curious to see what Diablo 4 looks like six months after launch. What is this going to look like in December? What is this going to look like in summer of 2024? Personally, I'm totally on board for it. <laughs> I love this beta. There's another open beta next weekend where they're unlocking every single class. I'm going to beat the whole thing again. I love the story they have in this demo so far. It's so dark. It's so creepy. This is the macabre, messed up, retro Diablo macabre. that many of us have been craving. <clears throat> and I gotta say, huge thumbs up. Diablo is back. But these have just been my thoughts. What do you think about Diablo 4? I Positive guess he regrets ripping that t-shirt now. Hit those server cues, those login times. Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a big old thumbs up. Share with your friends and subscribe if you haven't already. And please keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something I wonder else, if he regrets uh, ripping that t-shirt that or... he bought. I don't know, man. All right, here we go. Brainlit times. Pokemon Company and Nintendo are hiring someone with deep knowledge on NFTs, blockchain, and metaverse. Pokemon NFTs are going to go fucking crazy, man. I'm telling you. What their future plans are. Now, you may recall that the fuck? another company boards the NFT bandwagon, this time Nintendo, or at least based on who they're looking to hire for. Dude, I will 100% be buying Pokemon NFTs easily. For what position? It might tell us a bit about... Timothy Marco with the two. First, Alan was back. Now Diablo's back. Well, I would make a gay joke, but I'm not going to because it's 2023 and I'll get in trouble. What their future plan. But just kind of think about it. It'll make sense. Czar. Now, you may recall that back in February 2022, Nintendo was asked the question about what the metaverse holds for the gaming landscape and where Nintendo's stance is on that front. It reads right here, Nintendo has interest in the metaverse but ponders what fun it can provide. The direct quote is right here, the official translation from the Q&A portion of the financial results briefing that this quote was taken from. It reads, the metaverse has captured the attention of many companies around the world and it has great potential, said Nintendo President Shuntaro Furukawa. It but at does. the same time, he did say that there is no easy way to define specifically what kinds of surprises and enjoyment the metaverse can deliver to our customers we might consider something if we can find a way to i mean animal crossing te technically is a metaverse game if you want to really break it down like animal crossing is technically a metaverse you know you like play in the fucking game build your little fucking island interact with other players like that's literally what a metaverse is so yeah it does have great potential just facebook sucks at making it to convey a Nintendo approach to the metaverse that many people can readily understand, but we do not think that this is the situation at the present time. So Nintendo's definitely eyeing the metaverse, but they're still figuring out how they can implement that into their games with their IPs. And it seems as though they're beginning to experiment, especially with who they're trying to hire. They're trying to hire a corporate development principal at the Pokemon Company International. The Pokemon Company being a subsidiary of Nintendo's. And you can see right here that... No, it's not, you fucking retard. See, this is how you know Yong is a fucking moron. What a dumb fuck. Pokemon is not a subsidiary of Nintendo, you fucking mouth breather. Nintendo only owns 33% of it. The Pokemon Company is owned by Creatures, Game Freak, and Nintendo. Each are equal owners at one-third.
It is not a fucking subsidiary of Nintendo. You absolute brainlet. That this job position is a pretty big deal. Job title, corporate development principal, president and corporate development office. These are your following roles and responsibilities if you apply for this job. Advise the president and executive leadership team on driving, assessing, and prioritizing the long-term strategic direction and operating priorities, maximizing the group synergies, corporate development and innovation, and then beyond that, design, build, and run the... Pokemon Company Innovation Challenge, an internal idea sourcing platform to gather and assess the Pokemon Company's employees' innovative ideas. It is their job to identify, analyze, monitor, and build relationships with external co-development partners and create a platform to test new ideas, feasibility, and support iterative development by working with the Pokemon Company internal stakeholders and external co-developers. So these are some pretty high-level executive responsibilities here. And to really emphasize the importance of this position, the job listing states that this role puts you in the middle of the Pokemon Company in unprecedented growth in the company's history and it looks like one of the ways they hope to further drive that growth is by partaking in blockchain crypto nfts web3 metaverse you name it as can be seen in this section of the job listing in the category of what you'll bring a couple of the bullet points dude i will become a crypto bro if pokemon puts out official nfts because that shit is gonna go fucking crazy and anybody who doesn't think it will is, like, delusional. That shit's going to go fucking wild. Lord Danielson with the five off topic, but I finally passed my A-plus exam this morning. Can we get a DSP Gaming? Sure, man. Congratulations to you. Griffin Gaming just did a super chat. said, Gaming! Gaming! You generate... Oh, God. React to anime in the West is an absolute... All right, man. You're really... Like, bro, you really got to kick me while I'm fucking down. Like, I'm already fucking sick. And then you throw this shit on top of me. Jesus Christ. All right, we'll check it out. Big ups, I guess. Sierra highlighted reads deep knowledge and understanding of Web3, including blockchain technologies and NFT and or metaverse. Deeply connected to a network of investors and entrepreneurs in the technology sectors above Web3 and Metaverse. So have knowledge of this whole landscape and know people who are in this landscape and have the ability to bring in partners who are able to collaborate with us for endeavors that may involve Web3 and NFTs. And then there's this one other bullet point that stood out to me in the what you'll bring section of this job listing. Fo I would like to apply for the job. I really think I would be perfect. Bro, could you imagine if I was, like, running fucking Pokemon? Damn. That shit would be fire. Weaponized autism with a two. You, Jen, don't go to work tomorrow. That's right, man. Well, he's, I think he's already at work right now. Fucking nerd. Focuses on the long-term gain over short-term slash transactional gains. While it's vague enough or it could be interpreted a number of ways... Part of me fears that this is giving off the vibe of recurrent long-term monetization over your traditional business models right now. And part of that will involve leaning heavily into Web3 and NFTs and crypto and blockchain. All of these elements that so far have brought no genuine benefits to the players, have offered no genuine advances in game design that improve games overall. So far, they've just... Dude, block dude, like literally the Pokemon trading card game online already has like a blockchain or NFT func not blockchain, but NFT function functionality. Fuck dude, I cannot talk. Holy shit, my throat is fucked up. But anyway. <clears throat> let me finish. If you play the online Pokemon card game you are able to trade and like sell your cards. So you enter the code cards you get from opening like real life packs and then you get code or you get the cards online as well. And from there you can trade and sell your online cards to people. So there's already like an NFT functionality there that people like. So it's not really crazy to say, oh, stick it on the blockchain. Like, that's literally all they would be doing. It'd be like if Valve said, oh, all your CSGO skins are now linked to the blockchain. Like, it would actually be a good use of the fucking blockchain, in all honesty. 
spin buzzwords and fads that companies are trying to sell us as something that will be genuinely beneficial to us. But if you really look at what this technology does in terms of how it's currently implemented, it's all about trying to turn video games into their own micro economies, trying to turn players into investors. And it is a landscape that is so unregulated that it's rife with scams, schemes, cons, theft, hacking, uh, all kinds of uh, nefarious and sh based activities shady activity a number of new salads have caught wind of this job listing and are not particularly enthused about what this could potentially mean for the future the pokemon company is looking to hire someone with nft knowledge reports nintendo life with an image that shows a crying jigglypuff sad days indeed to see so many companies trying to go in this direction and then beyond that you've got kotaku here who put it very simply oh no pokemon could be getting into nfts could is technically the right word to use because we know nothing definitive about what <clears throat> Nintendo and the Pokemon company's plans are with hiring for this new position that requires knowledge and connections with the landscape of Web3, Metaverse, Crypto, Blockchain, NFTs, etc. But the fact that Nintendo is hiring someone with expertise in that landscape is obviously not something one can ignore. It clearly means Nintendo is trying to poke and prod at this landscape. This isn't Nintendo, you fucking dipshit. Oh my god, bro. This guy is not a Nintendo employee. Poke the Pokemon Company and Nintendo are two completely separate entities. Like... They're not the same thing. Nintendo owns 33% of the Pokemon company. They don't even own the majority of that shit. So, for all we know, Nintendo may have zero fucking interest in this, and it's game freaking creatures that want this shit to happen. So, that's what's so stupid. But Yong is so dumb, he doesn't actually know that the Pokemon Company and Nintendo are entirely separate entities. ...and see what they can come up with, see how they can take advantage. Nintendo's very clearly not ruling out delving into this stuff, and they've expressed before that they see some potential in the metaverse. They're just trying to figure out how they can make it work, and it looks like they are pushing to make it work by hiring someone who has expertise. They're not hiring them. Holy fuck, dude. He's in... The blockchain, crypto, oh web, metaverse, NFTs, uh, ecosystem. What a and with Pokemon dumbass. being what it is, a game that emphasizes collecting, a game that emphasizes catching them all, which is the catchphrase of the IP, yeah, I can certainly see Nintendo getting some ideas about ways they can... Dude, the fuck, I'm telling you, Pokemon NFTs would go fucking crazy. I would 100% like dump money into that shit make pokemons collectible through nfts and kind of i mean shit bro my like card collection i basically turned it into an nft by like putting it in the uh vault hold on let me see if i can pull this up for you guys but like my pokemon card collection theoretically is in the form of an nft if you really want to think about it. Because I don't like physically have my cards. But I can look at them. Where the fuck is the vault? PSA keeps changing their fucking site. And I don't know where the fuck they put the uh, vault. Um, there it is. They put it up top. But yeah, I got like my... Uh, NFTs, bro. Holy fuck, they zoomed out. Hold on. Go back. Alright, there's nothing showing on there. But yeah, I got like my little NFT collection technically. I mean, they're real cards, but I don't physically hold on to them. Like, I can click on one of my cards and pull it up. There she be. I mean, this is my card. I own it. But I, like, can look at it digitally. So if they did something like this, 
where it's like basically virtual cards and you get like a virtual like portfolio of cards you can look at. I think honestly it would do well. I mean, I like having my collection in this format where I can just go and like, you know, look at my shit whenever I want. It's stored securely and I don't have to worry about insurance. So, I mean, that's like a $1,500 card right there. Of kickstarting their own economy based on the value of different Pokemons and the NFTs attached to them, which could pave the road to something along the lines of the digital version of how the Charizard Pokemon trading card goes for, what, hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, I don't know, a lot of money. They want that, but just a more active uh, economic landscape where people are constantly buying and selling and trading and do you know nothing about trading cards, Yong? Because people are always constantly buying, selling, and trading physical cards as well, you fucking dumbass. Treating Pokemon like a giant speculative stock market. There's not... People already do that shit. I do it daily. I have a stack of 100 cards I'm going to grade for that exact fucking reason. Holy fuck, dude. People have been doing this with trading cards and sports cards since they fucking existed. What's the big deal? Not me saying definitively this is what Nintendo's gonna do. This is just the kind of stuff that my brain. It's not Nintendo, you fucking dumbass. Is imagining based on how NFTs, crypto, blockchain, Web3, Metaverse have been utilized thus far, how they've been implemented thus far, based on how companies have conducted themselves so far. Nintendo is still a company, the Pokemon company is still a company that will prioritize financial results. And so I can see them thinking about such things. We'll see what happens. Only time will tell. But this wouldn't be the first time that an entity has tried to exploit the idea of collecting monsters or collecting animals to integrate that stuff with NFTs and to have people buy in and engage. Yeah, bro, the bored apes. The bored ape yacht club. <laughs> <laughs> Shit was so fucking gay. In this gay. buying, selling, trading, uh, vicious cycle. Axie Infinity, you may recall, was a rather shady game, essentially a Pokemon clone, where finance bros exploited low-paid workers. I talked about that in a video. Based. I love my fellow finance bros. Video from months back. And beyond that, this was the game. Shout out to the homies. Game that was infamously hacked last year back in March of 2022 and had $615 million worth of cryptocurrency stolen. So, yeah, there's that. Beyond that, there is Logan Paul's scam of an NFT game called CryptoZoo. I talked about it in a previous video from a few weeks back. This was a scam that was investigated and exposed by YouTuber CoffeeZilla, who released a three-part... Dude, Yong is really desperate to fill this video out. Like, bro, talk about Pokemon, dude. A series where he shared his findings and just completely... I want to hear Yong make some more incorrect assertions about the Pokemon franchise. And utterly blew the lid wide open on this thing, and Logan Paul had to take the L there. This was supposed to be a game where players hatch NFT eggs and trade exotic digital animals, except not only were these digital animals stopped... I'm just waiting for him to compare Pokemon Go to a casino again. That's what I want to hear. Get off this other shit. Talk photos that were photoshopped and repurposed. The whole game launched, you know, game, I use that term liberally here, launched completely broken and unfinished with uh, various bugs and issues, and it caused a lot of people to lose a ton of money from hundreds to thousands to tens of thousands, and for some, hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> this is the kind of landscape that this is, and as Kotaku aptly highlights here, associating the child-friendly IP that is Pokemon with an ecosystem rife with fraud and scams would cause significant damage to Pokemon's public image. No, it wouldn't. I've yet to hear one good explanation for how NFTs will be genuinely beneficial to players in a way that isn't artificial and BS, and how it will further game design beyond allowing companies to pursue new monetization. Hey, Yong, here's a fucking concept for you, my guy. Not every implementation of an NFT has to do with fucking, you know... Gaming. Midnight Mawa with the two, this whole game, says the guy playing Mo Yeah, I don't fucking know, dude. <coughs> I just, like... Yong just really irritates me. Did he get new glasses? Those look new. They're crooked, too. Look at that. 
one side's higher than the other. Avenues. It's more about benefits for the companies rather than benefits to the products, to the creativity of video games. Now, it's worth noting that back in December of 2022, there was this company that tried to use the Pokemon IP to make their own NFT game called Poke World. I don't know why they thought that would go well. Nintendo is notorious for how harsh they are when anyone tries to use their IPs in any way, shape, or form that doesn't fall in line with their strict guidelines China? on that front. Even if it's like a fan project, passion project made with love, Nintendo will sue the shit out of those people or copyright take down their stuff. But this is Base. a case where this is a company that was associated with crypto and NFTs and they were trying to turn Pokemons into NFTs. Now this is a case where Nintendo is in the right to protect their IPs when another company is using that IP without their permission to try to profit off of it. But part of me has to wonder whether part of why Nintendo went so hard on this is because Nintendo has their own version. Of Nintendo didn't fucking do this, dumbass. Naturally, none of this sat particularly well with the Pokemon company who was allegedly tipped off. Yeah, there you go, man. It's not Nintendo. It's the Pokemon company. The Pokemon company and Nintendo are two entirely different things. Enough Poke World plan their own Pokemon metaverse where you collect Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon NFTs or something and they didn't want any other entities to interfere with those potential plans. I don't know. These are the kinds of paranoid thoughts that go through my head when a company like the Pokemon company is starting to hire people. Well, at least he said the Pokemon company not this time and not fucking Nintendo. Who are required to have deep knowledge and understanding of Web3, blockchain, NFT, and be deeply connected to a network of investors and entrepreneurs in the technology sectors in this ecosystem. And I'm not the only one who is feeling a sense of foreboding on all of this. Here's true user Pari who tweeted, Pokemon Company posted a job opening that encompasses blockchain, NFTs, and Web3 technologies. Oh no. Pari also makes it a point to highlight that Square Enix has recently been very bullish about Metaverse and NFTs and now to have the Pokemon Company join the fray. Like it just sucks, especially coming from the Pokemon Company, which is a company dedicated to products that are supposed to be family friendly and harmless and, you know, meant for kids as much as adults and all. But Yong, I thought Pokemon Go was literally a casino and I'm sure you would say the same thing about Pokemon cards. They're like buying scratchers these things and to promote this kind of crap or at least to lean into this crap based on what the job listing seems to indicate it seems to go counter to you know everything nintendo and entities like the pokemon company promote as far no it does not as what they aim to achieve with their products which is to make games that are as accessible as possible like are you trying to yeah no they're they're making games that are accessible as possible but when it comes to their trading cards and collectibles, they're extremely fucking expensive to actually get the good shit. Turn kids into gamblers and investors, and are you trying to expose them to a landscape where they can easily be scammed? I would love for kids to be turned into investors. That's great. That's a good life lesson to learn. Where they'll... Based Pokemon. will fall prey to all kinds of cons and schemes, and... You know, a landscape where theft can happen through hacks. Now, some folks are trying to be optimistic by saying things like looking into the job opening, blockchain and NFTs are only a qualification and are not any of the responsibilities that one must do. Plus, this is the international side of the Pokemon company, so not likely NFTs will show up on anything Pokemon related, so there shouldn't be much to worry about. I don't know, the Pokemon company's job listing here seems pretty adamant that you must have deep knowledge and understanding as well as be deeply well, Yong has never applied for a job in his life, so he doesn't understand that, you know, a lot of job listings don't actually have the real responsibilities on there. Connected. Maybe it'll be a while before Nintendo and the Pokemon company's ideas for how they can integrate NFTs, blockchain, and metaverse into Pokemon will come to life. But it does feel like the wheels are starting to turn and that they're trying to get something started there. The, it feels like the experimentation phase has begun, the conceptualization stage has begun. And I fear that Nintendo and or the Pokemon company will exploit people's emotional attachment to one of the biggest IPs in the world. Use the allure of collecting Pokemon to try to normalize NFTs and try to find new monetization avenues on that front. Regardless of if it comes at the cost of people being financially harmed by the promise of 
Dude, people are financially harmed by opening too many fucking packs of Pokemon cards already. What fucking difference does it make if they do it digitally or in person? You know, profitable investment ventures. Keep in mind that Nintendo is not above engaging with shady monetization tactics, especially where mobile games are concerned. Titles like Fire Emblem Heroes, Mario Kart Tour, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, Pikmin Bloom, and then when it comes to Pokemon, Pokemon Go, Pokemon Unite. They all engage in some of the worst monetization practices that video games and especially mobile games do. Nintendo is not above compromising their ideals by doing things like adding gambling in kids games in order to make a quick buck. I'm just, I'm not foreseeing any sort of bright future here. What Nintendo game has gambling in it? What the fuck is he talking about? All of this is <laughs> ominous to me. But only time will tell. All we can do right now is speculate, but given the current track record of companies who have tried to integrate blockchain, NFTs, and metaverse, nothing about Nintendo hiring someone with deep knowledge on that stuff and being deeply connected with you know, entrepreneurs who are in that landscape offers any sort of good vibe. But that's just no, 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 no. I'm not talking about, like, simulated gambling. I'm talking about real gambling. Like, I put in five bucks and then I can walk away with 50. That's gambling, bro. That is gambling. Not being like, oh, I played the fucking digital slot machine in Pokemon Emerald and got a fucking Poke Flute. You know, that type of shit. Midnight Mawile with the two. I hate it. Did he defend GT7? Uh, he did for a while, and then he finally came out and started talking shit about it eventually. It took him a long time, though. A very long time. Just one man's take. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on this Pokemon company job listing that seems to be emphasizing blockchain and crypto. This video said so much without saying a single fucking thing. Now, here's the other thing people are losing their shit over related to NFTs. <clears throat> this is Square Enix's. I haven't actually watched this yet. This is Square Enix's NFT game. Either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. Either, yeah, the either, music either fucking sucks, donate, bro. Get the fuck out. Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. Untangle the story, bro. That was a big fat. I thought they were gonna show something. I didn't even fucking see. Damn, that's a shame. I thought they were actually going to show it. Guess not. But yeah, that's what people are losing their shit over related to Square Enix. And Florida, man, with the five gifted memberships, really appreciate it, man. Big ups. Lord Pothead Investor with the two. I can see Yong, yeah, getting exposed for buying NFT. Dude, he's a massive consumer. I don't know if he would actually buy NFTs, but he definitely has, like, a bunch of, like... I wouldn't be surprised if he's, like, a fucking card-opening addict. I could see that, honestly. I mean, shit. I would be, too, if I didn't check myself. I had to stop for myself from opening shit. Because I wasted so much money opening packs. Alright, so you generation, we will do your wonderful recommendation. Paste. Uh, the fucking thumbnail already looks absolutely terrible. Uh, I, uh, oh my god, fuck. Uh, what is going on here? I'm just- Oh my god, what is going on? Trying to enjoy Xenoblade Chronicles 3, one of the best games I've ever played, and the- I'm sorry bro, you should play some other games. Rest of the fandom is suffering. It's like a western anime Chernobyl, with toxic radiation polluting the whole friggin' world. Oh my god. Censorship has hit a new low, and it's hard to remain hopeful, but I'll try. Oh no, man, did you not get to see the 12-year-old's titties?
Welcome back to Otaku Daikun. Dai here. Ugh. So yeah, I apologize in advance, but this video is a bit of a downer. What started as a vid dunking on Square Enix has evolved into a tentacle monster of censorship and controversy. It really sucks, but a lot has been going on, and for a channel that fights for artistic freedom against rotten censors, I have to talk about it. There are a couple of incidents that all share a common thread, so indulge me as I guide you through these marshes. Ooh. First, I want to talk about localization. I'll say it bluntly. A bad localization essentially is censorship. Instead of black bars, it's masking the original content with entirely different words, which can arguably be worse. Like when China straight up redraws anime frames to cover characters up. Based China. Hold on. There we go. <clears throat> this became relevant with the release of Live a Live, or as it's said in Japanese, Raibu a Raibu. Raibu a Raibu? Dude, just say that Asian people can't pronounce the letter L. You don't need to fucking mock them. Relevant with the release of redraws anime frames to cover characters up. This became relevant with the release of Live a Live, or as it's said in Japanese, Raibu a Raibu. Just say that Asian people can't pronounce English words, my guy. You don't need to actually fucking actively mock them. Raivu, a Raivu? Like, come on, bruh. Rut row, Raggy. Like, come on, bruh. Just say the fucking name. As with other Square Enix works, a lot of liberties were taken with this game's localization, and fans were quick to point out the differences. The first screen cap I saw was this. Where a guy tells a girl not to get angry, as it lets her pretty face go to waste. You'll see later that the writer was clearly trying to avoid referring to anything sexist. As such, this guy's official English text goes off on a completely irrelevant rant about pride and strength. This might not seem like the worst thing in the world, but you have to realize it's just one line out of hundreds and thousands in the game. My question is who even fucking played this game? And when you add them up... Dog, this looks like some shit from, like, the fucking, what, NES? You might as well be playing a different game in the end, when none of the characters act like they did in Japanese. The blunder here is that casual players won't ever realize that, yes, perhaps this NPC was being sexist, but I'd argue that's a part of the experience. If he makes a condescending comment in Japanese, I want to see that in the English script. Changing it like they did is what gives localization a bad name, making fans want a more straightforward translation, because what we got isn't a translation at all. Instead, they took that translation, went, nah, and tossed it out for something original. Here's another example of the same blunder. In Japanese, this lawless guy says it's not a woman's place to butt in when a man is setting things straight. This mansplaining sort of attitude was changed in the Western release to be something about owning up to one's mistakes. The idea of setting things straight and making up for mistakes are indeed similar enough, but what gets lost in translation is this dude's condescending machismo. The woke machismo. crowd might be happy about that, because the western version is fixing Japan's misogyny, but I'm not so delicate that I need someone to hide parts of a character's attitude from me. I don't need to live in a fantasy where everything is politically correct. Rather, I want what the Japanese got, regardless of the message or attitude it carries. Well, bruh. Learn Japanese. There you go. The solution's right there. Stop relying on other people to speak Japanese for you. Learn the language, and then you can get whatever version you want. Now, let it be said that this isn't a push to keep misogynistic stuff in my anime and games. It's a push to keep things accurate to the creator's vision, which does mean that if a Japanese artist <laughs> wants to promote feminism or LGBT causes or oppose misogyny, I really don't mind so long as it's not trying to censor someone else's idea. 
Some fans jumped the gun and accused localizers of forcing in woke language into the AI Somnium Files games. But those themes were <laughs> actually something the original creator wanted in the game, and they're present in both Japanese and English. This may be true, but definitely not on fucking Twitter. That's for sure. Maybe in the real world, but this shit does not apply to the fucking LGBT on Twitter, that's for sure. Unfortunately, Square Enix has an ethics team of employees who sift through any of their actual artists' work to change things right as they begin to blossom. When Live a Live was originally released on the Super Nintendo, it had a scene where you could obtain the character Taiko's panties. For all oh, modern oh Switch God. releases, this was changed to you finding her secret stash to again be more politically correct and safe for work, I guess. How old is Taiko? Let's check. Hi, Echo. What game is this shit? Let's see. I don't see anything, but it says her name means mysterious child. Bruh. I can't find an age, but her name means mysterious child child i can assure you this was a choice from the ethics team not the guys who made the game back in the 90s as such i'm sure the trash localization is actually encouraged by square enix whereas with the seven seas entertainment debacle the original publishers actually sided with the fans since localizers often have a bad <laughs> reputation of insulting people on twitter for daring to criticize their work i decided to look up the game's credits to find who was responsible for this game's english adaptation the localization director was a man named John Crow, and while I wasn't able to find his public Twitter account, I did notice him being mentioned by a colleague named Liz Bushhouse, someone who's worked for Xseed and even Fantasy Star Online. Puppy dog. Despite never even speaking with this woman, I discovered she had me blocked on Twitter. Like Smarter than she looks. Likely through a mass blocking tool. It really bugs me, because it definitely comes off as her covering her ears to any criticism of the industry, no matter who it's from and where it's directed. Dude, some people just don't really want to hear people defend the presence of naked 12-year-olds in video games. Like, is it really that crazy? I know there are toxic trolls and jerks online who would stoop to threatening and harassing her, but I'm not one of those people, and her blocking me prematurely prevents any sort of meaningful conversation. I don't think she cares. All I started <laughs> off wanting to do was ask John Crow why he localized Live a Live the way he did. Thankfully, though, he's made his attitude clear with other projects he's worked on. Specifically, John is the localization lead for Final Fantasy XIV. Apparently, a lot of people like the localization for this game, but I still stand that he takes far too much creative liberty. <gasps> his localization team has a philosophy that doesn't aim to replicate the Japanese, but rather to make text that feels like it was originally written in English. Wanting FF14 to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with other Western games, he didn't want his game to feel like a translation. To me, that just reads as, To appeal to a global market, that means you have to appeal to the casuals who wouldn't understand the nuances of Japanese. Regardless, there's an example of their philosophy put into practice that we can go over. They post it as an attempt to show how clever they are, improving upon the direct translation. But to me, it's just an admission of how they change things unnecessarily. Here, we have what they call the direct translation. Oh god, I can swim, here we go. But, Aliza, will you be okay? To which she responds, I'm glad you asked. Alphanod can't swim. I'm glad you asked. Bro, what the fuck is that voice? But I'm good at swimming. That's right, Alphanod can't swim. This, yeah. this is the kind of example localizers often like to use when justifying their job, arguing that direct translations just don't sound natural. 
Personally, when I refer to translation though, I'm including the process of cleaning it up a bit. This first part actually reads perfectly fine to me. It's not until Eliza responds that it gets awkward, namely because this Alphanod guy is brought up without context. Here's the next step, where the localizer tweaks the direct translation. Now it's, I can swim, can you Eliza? With her replying, I'm glad you asked. I'm good at it actually, unlike Alphanod, who can't even swim. Unlike Alphanod, who can't even swim. This clears some things up, but butchers others. I hate what they did to the first sentence. For some reason, they killed any compassion the original line had. It was Bruh. plenty obvious that when the- Bro, what is this, like, autistic fucking- of? Uh, it's just- this is so stupid. You're gonna skip this fucking voice line nine times out of ten. Woman asked, Eliza, will you be okay? She was referring to swimming. The way she asked gave a sense of genuine concern. With the tweaked translation, it just seems so blunt. I can swim, how about you? Of course, it's not the end of the world, but it's fascinating to see how things get omitted. I like how they clear up the second bit, though. Rather than starting the sentence with Alphanod, it gives him proper context. It's much clearer for her to state her own skill in swimming before comparing herself to someone else. The problem now is that it sounds redundant when she mentions Alphanod a second time. It almost sounds like Rena in Higurashi when she repeats herself as a speech quirk, but I don't think that's what's intended here. Of course he can point to an exact example in fucking anime that it happens. Lastly, we're given the pre-edit text, which is the step where the localizer takes control to interpret for us. I can swim well enough, can you, Eliza? Well, it just so happens I am a skilled swimmer, unlike my dog-paddling brother. Hmm, sure, this definitely flows in English, but- Yeah, it's perfectly fucking fine, who cares? What is wrong with this, like, vo like, bro, why is this even a problem? Who fucking gives a shit? Genocide King revived with the two, I just beat my 36th game of 2023. Hogwarts Legacy, nice man. I liked Hogwarts Legacy a lot. I really enjoyed that game, and I was not expecting to. But it does so by omitting details and adding others. <clears throat> Again, the first woman's question seems rather blunt. It seems odd to add that part about her swimming well enough, while getting rid of the part, will you be okay, that I appreciated in the first step. I do like how this pre-edit fixes the redundancy, and it does help to know that Alphanod is her brother, but I hate the inclusion of dog paddling, as that specific term isn't anywhere in the Japanese, and it also, <gasps> the whore. also removes her thanking the woman for asking. If I had it my way with this specific line, I would have gone with, I can swim, but Eliza, will you be okay? And then, thanks for asking, I'm actually a good swimmer, unlike thanks my brother. That's right, it turns out that uh... Alphanod can't swim. With good voice actresses, this exchange would sound totally natural, while retaining all the information contained in the original. Even better, it doesn't have to introduce the concept of dog paddling. Sadly, people who simp for aggressive localization tend to write off anything accurate as dry and unnatural, validating and praising the localizers for these changes. I especially hate how this person specifies giving English speakers the same experience, because I'd argue that her a I'm a Nelly! Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. Attitude with dog paddling creates a strong difference between the two versions. In the Western version, Eliza comes off as having more attitude, whereas the Japanese Eliza seems more pleasant. Honestly, if all localizations were this tame, I wouldn't have an issue with how this industry is going. But oftentimes, this attempt to sound natural is mainly an excuse to make things more edgy or hip only to come off looking like that one how do you do fellow kids meme. meme for instance we've got this bit from the yakuza games it's hard to read but the localized version says just thinking about those awful men makes me cringe i'm literally shaking right now what the fuck is wrong with that that sounds completely normal for a kid to say the actual translation doesn't have this gen z language instead simply saying just remembering gives me the shivers Shouldn't it say, uh, shiver me timbers? Like, bro, what the f- Oh, this is so fucking stupid. Who cares, bro? Like, honestly, this is the definition of- Please, touch some grass. It makes the localized version feel like an abridged series. 
Another bizarre attempt to flavor text has Estelle from The Legend of Heroes saying, Yeah, everyone says that before they get hit with the big stick. Instead of, Oh, you've done it now. Seven I'll inches? make you regret those That's words. That's pretty big. Bro, here comes a big hot load of PlayStation 5s. Oh man, it's so thick. Seriously, there are dozens of ways the original translation could be worded without changing things to getting hit with a big stick. The original was perfectly fine as is. The World Ends With You, specifically its sequel, is filled with this edgy dialogue that tries to sound more hip at the expense of the original meaning. Here, we've got a chick who resorts to spamming slang at every chance. Instead of saying UG, which stands for underground, she says OMG. Then when she elaborates on the underground, it's changed to You nerds seriously thought you were still in Shibuya? This is the UG, dummies. There's Oh my god. What a terrible change. Some extra attitude in the last panel. Ugh, I literally I thought these fucking dweebs liked it when, you know, anime girls had more attitude. They like getting shoved around by powerful women. Zong Xena with the two crispy critters. Oh, yeah, dude. What a great game. Atomic Shard. Really spelled it out for you. UG, the underground. You're in the afterlife, losers. If you were to listen to an entire game with this injected attitude at every turn, your perception of this character will wind up completely different. Little changes like this are everywhere. What should say, you seem to be in trouble, was changed to, why the long faces, chums, sad emoji. Chums? What sort of odd artistic inspiration gave the localizer the idea to write chums? This isn't supposed to be their canvas. I guess Spongebob, bro, the chum bucket. Oski Woski with the five. Oh lord, please forgive me, for you may forgive I don't. Dude, this shit is fucking awful. Like, this is literally, the, the, like, the definition of touch some fucking grass, if I've ever heard yeah, it. Yeah, I'm a gamer! <laughs> Gaming. Oh, shit. Also, my 2DS is coming in soon. Any games I should download? Um, 2DS. Fuck, I'm trying to think. I mean, obviously, I'd get, like, Mario Kart, Smash Brothers, Omega Ruby, and Alpha Sapphire, I feel like are must-haves. Because I would argue those are like the best Pokemon games of all time, easily. So I think before you get anything else, I would get that, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, and then I would get like the Legend of Zelda like re-releases on the 3DS because I feel like those are probably pretty good if you like Zelda. If it's not in the Japanese, you don't need to put it in here in English. That's right, she's our leader, was changed to, that's right, she's our queen. Is this guy supposed to be gay or something? Looks like it to me. I've actually seen this in other localizations, where you've got a guy who speaks with a feminine voice, like Liron and Gurren Lagan. I wonder if he's gay. Instead of just replicating that vocal tonality like Steve Bloom did, sometimes localizers will sparkle up the dialogue, making it seem like a bad a gay sparkle. stereotype. I recently played the visual no- Nika, you- Oh, uh, Hatsumira on Steam and really enjoyed it thanks to them putting up an 18 plus patch to get around Steam censorship. Its localization, though, was all over the place, especially with this gay guy named Karin. Literally everything he says has gay slang like girl and queen bitch. I wonder why. Hmm. That is not what he says in the Japanese voiceover. It's as if his voice and appearance didn't seem gay enough for themselves. They just had to pile it on with dialogue, too. Which is sad, because he's a pretty interesting character outside of the altered text. Here, we've got a pathetic attempt to inject memes into the script. The guy's supposed to be talking about the scan ability in the game, but the localizer changed it to taking my galaxy brain for a test run. It might seem like just silly memes, but a lot of these attempts to flavor dialogue come right from Twitter, such as a guy wondering about his Japanese curry being authentic, getting changed into a matter of cultural appropriation. Now, it would be arrogant to assume that a game or anime's success hinges upon its localization, but I can't help but feel these strange changes in both the localization team and with Square's ethics department have ultimately cost the world ends with you sales because fans are sick of this. Dude, no one has ever heard of The World Ends With You. That's the reason why nobody fucking bought it. Stuff. 
We're also sick of the pandering. One of the things constantly being changed for the West is femininity. Just like with Seven Seas and I Think I Turned My Childhood Friend Into a Girl, we often see Japan's view on femininity co-opted by... I think I... Dude, he's mentioned that in other videos before. I think I turned my childhood friend into a girl. Like, what the fuck are these motherfuckers watching in their free time? Western writers who think they know better or object to the original sentiment. Aegis Rim is guilty for making a femboy non-binary, and here the localizers are trying to avoid referring to a woman's breasts. They're skirting around the actual text, like how I have to censor myself on YouTube, which absolutely sucks. Here we have a guy remarking about how crazy it is for a girl to go out on her own, implying it's dangerous. Andrew Tate status? I sell her with the five dad joke time if a child refuses to nap. Are they guilty of resisting a rest? <laughs> oh my god. Jeez. The Western version just ignores the part about being a girl. Same for this one. It's got <laughs> Ellie declaring her party is strong despite consisting of women. Any reference to them being women, though, is taken out of the localization. Mind you, this statement doesn't even mean that women are weak. Rather, it's just acknowledging that there are people out there who would in fact underestimate a team of women. Both serve as empowering moments for the female party, but the Western release ignores the fact that sexism is a part of the story. It's especially pathetic here, because the dialogue is supposed to be Sydney saying, assuming one of us was going to get hurt, it better be the dude than the girl, right? He's trying to be chivalrous, putting himself in harm's way to protect a girl. The localizers wanted Simp. None of that. Instead, changing the line to a pompous, if anything, I'd say most of the girls I know are better at fighting monsters than I am. Chad, he's trying to get them to go get beat the fuck out of first. Based. The problem with a lot of feminist media these days is that it assumes a woman can't be strong or competent unless she's absolutely obliterating her male colleagues. As a result, we've got guys being humiliated in order to make the women seem superior. Rather Dude, that's like literally every single fucking romance anime that comes out. The fucking main character male gets humiliated by the fucking female characters. Dude, that's literally the fucking stereotypical bullshit that these motherfuckers gobble up like a fucking hot cock. I don't know, man. Like, these motherfuckers literally watch all these shitty fucking, like, animes and slice of life and fucking romance shows where you have, like, these cucked-ass, retarded, like, main characters. And it's, like, literally these, like, female characters are, like, so much more, like, pushy, abrasive. They walk all over the guys and shit. Like, bro, he's literally describing anime. Rather than having both sexes working in tandem, like, you know, the majority of anime and JRPGs. It's really sad to see a character's chivalry transformed into inferiority, because I want to experience the characters as Falcom intended for the Japanese. Following similar- Then learn Japanese and quit bitching about how other people translate the game for you. If you don't like how other people are translating a game- translate it yourself progressive logic these same localizers oh wouldn't dare no. stand for a character labeled as chubby lady instead making her into a dramatic noble there is no doubt in my mind that someone affiliated with or in support of body positivity intercepted this line between the japanese writers and the final western product deciding they had to step in and fix an injustice <laughs> that or maybe they were afraid sony would take issue with it but that's a whole other issue that we'll get to soon. Oh, oh yeah, great. and the same thing here. We've got this guy, Suduga, asking whether someone is a man or a woman, with the Western version changing it to asking for the person's pronouns. Unless the Japanese word for pronoun is in that original text box, which it isn't, then I don't want it in the Western release. That right there really is the Gen Z equivalent of the old rice ball jelly donut thing. It's not hard at all to understand that fans want accuracy. The only thing stopping most anime fans from buying what they want is a language barrier. 
It's not a matter of cultural sensitivities or political differences. We just want to know what the hell they said in Japanese. And it's a lot easier for localizers to just provide that than it is for us to individually all learn Japanese for ourselves. I Siler, Heck, oh when shit, it's something. why didn't it pause? I Siler with the five, why was the stadium so hot after the game? Because all the fans left. Bruh, 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 bruh. That one's not bad. That can be easily translated. We often don't even need official localization. That's perhaps the most justifiable reason that piracy is still thriving within anime. Even if you have the money and desire to support the industry, the fan subbed version is often more authentic anyway, meaning that you'd be paying money for a worse experience. That's what makes censorship so insulting. And the most insulting case of censorship has just hit us recently with Square Enix's new Manga Up app. Almost immediately Ooh. after launching, fans noticed that the manga on their platform was heavily censored, with black bars covering up literally anything that could be considered sexual, whether it was or not. It didn't even matter if the girl was wearing a bra or a bikini top, the entire chest would be covered up obnoxiously. No. Edgy and anime go hand in hand, so a lot of your typical manga fare winds up looking like a drunk chessboard with all the censor bars. This one from Marin Kitagawa from Dress Up Darling is especially pathetic, because she's not naked, and you can buy this manga physically without the censorship. I recently made a video about censoring innocuous things like school uniforms, and how that winds up branding basic aspects of femininity inherently sexual. Because we can be a- Bill Clinton with a two, open the door. Open the door, open the door, you kill Uncle Hank. Oh my god, dude. I wish we could uh retcon Walt Jr. Like I I almost debated watching Breaking Bad again, but then you all reminded me of fucking Walt Jr. all the time, so I was like, mm, no. No. I can't do it, dude. I just don't want to sit through like fucking Skyler and you know <laughs> fucking Walt Jr. It's just so fucking bad. But, uh, yeah, let me... Gaming. Attracted to pretty much... I'm gonna watch Better Call Saul when they finally add season six to, uh, Netflix. Then I'll rewatch the whole thing. Anything. The more you try to avoid showing something indecent, the more you just wind up oppressing people unfairly. That's the signal that gets sent with censorship like this. A fully clothed woman having a big black bar over her pants because, what, <laughs> they crease? It's like some sleazy manager at an office telling his receptionist that she needs to cover up her cleavage because it distracts him. <laughs> now, Manga Up has since responded to the censor- Your titties are so big, I need you to get breast reduction surgery. I cannot focus. Ship, justifying- the if that's not a compliment, I don't know what the fuck is. This crap by saying it was unavoidable in order to secure a worldwide release. This means they're blaming the various platforms, such as the Apple Store, or payment services that may object to the manga on their app. What they also hint at is how there are certain countries demanding more censorship than others, and Square's solution was just to give everyone the fully censored versions, instead of trying to offer different versions to different regions. In either case, it just shows that they don't really care about manga or its fans, and are instead just trying to capitalize on it shamelessly. If it were a matter of the platform, and you really cared about being the best manga app out there, you'd make your own platform, even if it meant not being promoted on more censor-heavy services. If it's due to international differences, then only censor things in the countries that demand it. Both of these things would cost money, which Square wouldn't dare do. In fact, a lot of fans believe this outrageous censorship exists because Square couldn't be bothered to place the censor bars on their own. Instead, they have an AI that searches for what it thinks are crotches and chests, placing the See, that is haram. That's halal. Should not be exposing your knee. I saw there with the five. Shouldn't the roof of your mouth actually be called the ceiling? Bruh. Hold on. <laughs> I mean, I get. I don't fucking know. I feel like it could go both ways. Hmm. Hmm. I 
I feel like it could go both. Black bars automatically. That would certainly explain why something as innocuous as a kneecap was censored. Now, I didn't see proof of this, but I even heard that the letter Y was censored in a certain font for looking too much like the shape of cleavage. All of this shows a complete lack of respect for potential buyers, and if that's the attempt they're going to make to entice us, they can just straight up fail. It's a terrible business model anyway, charging you not on a subscription basis, but individually per chapter. While they offer some chapters for free, they split their catalog into sub-chapters to make what seems like a lot of free manga actually barely any. That, and for the chapters you do buy, that shit's time-gated and will expire. I personally advocate that nobody, absolutely nobody, should be signing up for this service. They don't deserve your money, and supporting them will only encourage further censorship down the road. If there's any hope on the horizon, it would be that fans are working oh, on shit, AI bro. algorithms of Holy fuck, bro, her titties are huge. Their own to actually uncensor anime and manga. Two programs called Hent AI and Deep Cream PY attempt to restore content. Why did you need to say Deep Cream PY? Just say Deep Cream Pie, bro. Placed behind mosaics and sensor bars. It's not perfect by any means, as it often struggles to differentiate between black bars and other dark lines on the page. But the effort is admirable. It just blows my mind how dense some of these localizers get. We anime fans buy up whatever looks interesting, and most of the time our only concern is whether it's censored or not. It can be infuriating to convey this sentiment to companies. Isaac Himmler with the two? I'm gonna give you generation the showers? I don't blame you, man. And one of the causes of this comes from the people working at those companies straight up hating the fans. When they're not hiding behind a wall of generic PR language, they're out there getting pissed at their own target audience. Recently, the manga for Summertime Rendering was licensed by Udon Entertainment. The manga features a character named Mio Kofune, who is apparently 15 years old, with some occasional nips on display. Oh my god, bro. He's upset he can't see the fucking nipples of a 15-year-old? What a sick fucker. Udon went ahead and censored out these details for their western release, defending their case by claiming the changes were minor and were made to avoid having the book criminalized as CP. As it would be. On paper, that does sound like a reasonable defense, given that the United States has a federal law called the PROTECT Act, which deems even fictional representations of minors in obscene situations illegal. Since Mio is labeled as 15, God bless the USA. 15, she counts in the US as a minor, and showing her naked body could be seen as obscene in court. The odds of this actually happening are extremely unlikely, though. In 2013, a man was arrested for possessing hentai, but only in conjunction with actual photos of children. His predatory nature came first. Lawmakers have opposed this PROTECT Act in the name of free speech, and California doesn't even abide by it, refusing to criminalize works as long as they don't involve or depict real children in their creation and consumption. Yeah, that's also the same state that made it, like, less of a pun- Isn't it no longer a felony? to perform oral sex on a minor now? I think that's California, right? If you have anal or oral sex with a kid, it's no longer a felony in California. So, yeah, not really a great fucking state to lead by example. Despite these laws in place, no anime publisher has ever been criminalized for this. And if they were, pretty much everyone would be guilty. You could make a case for obscenity with literally any ecchi anime that takes place in high school, and there have been tons of those through Ban it all. Throughout localization history. Banned, 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 banned. Gone. Forever. Also, Udon's forgetting that the easiest solution would be to either say that Mio is 16 or older, or just omit her age entirely. That's what Senran Kagura did, till Sony reared its ugly head. That's what makes this incident with Udon so strange. To anyone versed in anime, Mio's little bath scene is an everyday occurrence, so why all of a sudden does it need to be censored? The representative from Udon appears to be understanding of this controversy on social media, but their rationale still comes off as overly defensive. They claim that because the original author signed off on the changes, that they weren't disrespecting the art. 
I disagree. Just because a creator signs off on censorship, that doesn't mean it was what they originally envisioned or wanted. I don't see where... Ca hold on, let me see. California... Yeah, it lowers it from a felony to a misdemeanor. It doesn't make it legal, but it makes it no longer a felony. <clears throat> oh, fuck, dude. My throat is... Raped. I saw there with the five. How do you throw a party in outer space? You plan it. Oh <laughs> Jesus. Some artists are more apt to defend their works than others. And when it comes to localization, which is often a secondary market to them, creators might just be choosing the path of least resistance. It would be a different story if these creators were suddenly asked to censor their own works domestically. That's the kind of pressure that has Ken Akamatsu, the creator of Love Hina, taking office in Japanese government to fight against censorship culture. The other thing that Udon brings up is that the summertime rendering anime also lacks Mio's nips, employing the same steamy bath sensor in Barbie doll anatomy. In that case, though, such changes were made to appeal to Japanese broadcasting standards. They were probably aiming for a specific time slot and being forced. Oh, so it's okay when the fucking Japanese make things censored, but when the English version has to be censored because of laws in the U.S. that's an issue? Got it. ...to air on a different network or later at night might have cost them revenue. Plus, it's always possible that such details can be added back in with the Blu-ray release. The fact of the matter is that Mio in the Japanese manga isn't a problem, and fans want to push Western developers to defend that notion, at least if they want our money. This alone would have probably brushed away, if not for further provocation on part of the localization community. Jordan Reynolds is an editor who worked with Summertime Rendering when it featured on Manga Plus. He doesn't work directly for Udon, but he does seem to be advocating on their behalf, belittling fans for caring about the censorship. He went on a long tirade on Reddit that has since been deleted, but I want to counter what he says. First off, his language is confrontational and condescending, framing it like fans find- As it should be, man. You're, like, literally arguing with people who are, like, aggressively demanding to see a naked child. And Mio's nether is more important than the rest of the story. Now, if this Udon version were the only one in a- I mean, how else are you supposed to treat a bunch of fucking filthy degenerates that are, like, demanding to see a naked 15-year-old? ...existence, then I'd understand putting up with a tiny bit of censorship in order to enjoy the full manga. However, we fans have access to uncensored versions, giving us no incentive to support a product that can't be seen as definitive. Again, the author signing off on it doesn't matter, because he's doing it for money and not principle. Jordan claims that by caring about this instance of censorship, people are only enforcing the stereotype that anime fans are all creepy fat neckbeards who love their 2,500-year-old lolis. That's a load of crap, because there are plenty of different people that don't qualify as incel neckbeards that still oppose this censorship. At that point, the stereotyping is an issue for those who wish to ignore reality. Jordan's rant... Wait, hold on. Is an Let's issue see this real quick. 
You guys are further perpetuating that stereotype. Congratulations. Now maybe we can go do something about the stereotype of typical anime fans having neck beards being fat and smelling really bad when they go to conventions. I say as an overweight dude with a beard who has very who was very heavily depressed for well over a decade and probably fit that description on more than one occasion. Jesus fucking Christ, man. Depressed for a decade? Yeah, I'm gonna press X to down on that shit, bro. You were just obsessed with anime. Those who wish to ignore reality. <laughs> Jordan's rant sparked further discussion, and eventually, someone brought up the idea that censorship is wrong as a matter of principle. He shot this sentiment down by saying that nobody was complaining about the other ways the manga was censored. In this case, yep. he must be referring to how the anime... Because the fucking horny little neckbeards got upset when the titties weren't on display. ...a made other changes from the manga. All I've got to say is that we're not thrilled that the summertime rendering anime is a bit tamer than the comic. But at least in their case, that stuff was being done within Japan, and not as a result of foreign influence. We'd be just as pissed if whoever distributes the anime in the West made further changes from its Japanese version. Of course, it's silly to demand that fans prove they hate censorship in general, to prove they aren't always just in it for the lewd kiddos. It's just that this type of content is usually on the front lines. I'm always complaining about censorship of all sorts of things, such as the stupid Crunchyroll version of World's End Harem, which did feature adults in a lot of its scenes. Either way, we'll still have people stereotyping anime fans as creepers, and it sucks when it comes from within the community. Dude, you are perpetuating that issue by defending the creepy shit they like. That takes us to our next topic, the controversy surrounding anime Matsuri. Based. There's this YouTuber named Ministry of Otaku who attended the con and confronted a Tifa cosplayer. She was carrying a sign equating lolicons to child lovers, and he told correctly told her she was asking for a fight by provoking people like that. Of course, Twitter took this as him threatening to pick a fight with her directly, but even though he chose his words very poorly, it seems like he was indicating that it would make someone else want to start a fight with her, not necessarily him. Either way, he handled that situation unprofessionally, and I have no intent to defend him for that. I will say, though, that with the way the girl was presenting herself at this con, she was putting herself in a situation where any potential critics would all look like bad guys. Even genuine attempts to debate her would be interpreted as harassment. The thing that No, it wouldn't be harassment, it would be pedophilia defense. Bothers me is that anime conventions are supposed to be fun and centered around a love for the art. They're usually places where all sorts of fans can gather under a common interest. Yeah, get rid of the fucking pedophiles though. Naturally, this means that a convention will have both fans of Loli and critics of it. Well, the fans should be shunned, because there are actual kids that go to these fucking conventions. Thus, bringing a sign that criminalizes a portion of the community is intentionally provocative, and not at all- Good. All in the spirit of having a good time. In other words, it's a douchey thing to do. No, do you know what's a douchey thing to do? Jerk off to fucking kids and think you have some moral superiority complex because of my freedom of speech. I likened it to bringing a homophobic sign to a pride event. And, well, that went over as well. What? She brought an anti-pedophilia sign to a fucking pedo convention? Wow, the horror. As you'd expect. Twitter is not the place for people to have civil discussions. And yet that's where all the drama tends to be, and where companies are all typically measuring the masses. Now, for the record, I am not attracted to lolis. But Bruh. But I do defend their right to exist, based on how easy it is to start labeling all attractive anime characters as minors and lolis. Then why did they make them all under the age of 18 in the fucking shows? For instance, Mio in Summertime Rendering that we were talking about before, she's 15, but she's not a loli. And if you didn't... Yeah, she's still 15, bro. It's disgusting. ...have her labeled as 15 within the story, it's possible you might not ever know she wasn't your normal adult. Why do they label her as 15 in the story? Because the author is a sick fuck who's turned on by the idea of fucking a 15-year-old. It's a dangerous, slippery slope, and once we... No, it's not. 
start criminalizing. It's really not a dangerous slippery slope. Lollies, the woke will only add more crosshairs, expanding the net of what can be censored next. I have actual proof of this later in the video. For now, I'll leave it at this. If you really thought lolicons were predators, you'd probably do more than carry around a sign to insult them. The proper response to a child lover is to call the cops and get them investigated as a genuine threat to kids. Okay, fucking neckbeard. Shut the fuck up. Mind you, kids attend conventions like this after all. So if you really felt those kids were in danger, you would do more. Since people don't take this kind of action, and are using the term in a broader sense, them labeling people as pedos just wears the word down till it doesn't mean anything, which is another- No, I'm pretty sure it still means the same thing. ...reason we don't see lolly stuff in court very often. Hunting for lolly- Delta goal with the two of those pesky woke people? I know, those damn wokies who don't find kids attractive. Lollycons isn't an efficient way to weed out the actual threat. Authorities are much better off focusing on trafficking rings and fishing sites. Stuff like that. Our last topic for today happens to be the anime retailer Right Stuff, which has long since been one of the most reliable places to purchase anime-related goods from. Ooh. Just recently, though, they've been bought out by Crunchyroll, which, as you should know, is now merged with Funimation under ownership of Sony. For a while now. I saw there with the five. What do you call two monkeys who share an Amazon Prime account? Prime Apes. <laughs> mm. Bruh. Damn. And Bill Clinton with the five, did you hear that Whoopi Goldberg from The View had to apologize for using the word gypped because apparently it's offensive to gypsies? Bro, why? Dude, gypsies can kick fucking rocks. Those motherfuckers literally, their entire reputation is built on scamming and stealing from people so they can get fucked if they actually think anybody should feel offended for their fucking broke asses. Dude, gypsies are, like, nasty. Yeah, they're literal fucking bums, dude. They're, like, literal professional scam artists. Fuck the gyps. Who cares? Sony has shifted its CE. Yeah, I don't know, man. If I was Whoopi Goldberg, I wouldn't have... I wouldn't have said... I'm sorry to the fucking dirty gypsies that would have stolen my wallet if given the opportunity. I didn't mean to offend them. Yo, and headquarters from Japan to California, employing woke policies that censor not just anime in the West, but also developers working from Japan. Sony and Funimation were the ones to blame when Ishizoku Reviewers was licensed and then neglected for not adhering to the company's values. Clearly, those values have reared their head again, because while Right Stuff assures us that they'll still carry a wide variety of products, they will no longer be selling erotica. Sure enough, if you search for products they used to sell, such as the Hentai Heaven Collection Blu-rays, you'll either find no listings or be directed to an error page. Mind you, collections like these are typically the only way fans can get their hands on uncensored H anime in an official, legal capacity. I only bring it up because those erotica products Right Stuff sold were meant for and made by adults. It just goes to show that Maybe the new owners don't want to be a fucking porn dealer, bro. Not everybody wants to be in the adult entertainment business. That if we let these companies do as they please, the scope of what we'll see censored will only expand. If you listen to their excuses, they always <laughs> go, it's okay. We only censored this little thing over here. I mean, bro, honestly, I would not... Even if it's profitable, I personally would not want to be in the fucking porn business. Personally, but, you know, to each their own. Waterboy with the five, bro, his takes are so bad, it's hurting my head. Dude, this shit is, like, fucking awful. It's not like we're taking any of this other stuff away from you. That's what Nintendo localizers said about their censorship during the Wii U era. They were like... If you want to find lewd content, you can always just go over to Senran Kagura and games like that. We're not taking those away from you. Well, guess what's not around anymore. Thus, if we can't defend anime where it currently stands, then the playing field will grow so small that all that remains is a giant goalpost. It also doesn't help that Crunchyroll owning right stuff serves as a conflict of interest. There's no evidence of it yet. But I could totally see them giving Sentai Filmworks a harder time selling Blu-rays on the site. All of this is honestly really depressing, but there are things we can do. The obvious one is to not support companies when they pull this crap. Let them know that if they want our money, 
They have Dude, most anime fans don't even spend money on anime-related products. They just fucking pirate that shit anyway. ...have to earn it by providing quality content. It doesn't just end there, though, because if we don't let our voices be heard, those companies will start feeling validated in their decisions, and they'll start changing anime at its source. Our protest has to come in two waves. First, you gotta tell them you ain't buying their stuff, and second, they you ain't gotta tell them exactly anyway. why you won't support it. There's a third step as well, and that's to seek out platforms, creators, and companies that actually do the right thing. We need to promote and support them so that they can become more successful than the current market. This almost makes me sound like some kind of rebel or revolutionist, which I know seems silly for fictional yeah. entertainment. But at the end of the day, what we're asking for is extremely basic and entirely reasonable. Let us see those 15-year-old titties, right guys? We need to rise up as anime fans. We just want companies to translate Japanese works faithfully, with the same content and context present in the original. Free the nips. That, and we want Japanese creators to make what they want, without being pressured or coerced by Western standards. If you agree with me, go ahead and share this video around. Leave your comments, and if you please... I guess you generation agreed with him because he shared the video. You know, big ups to you generation for spreading the good word. Guys, watch this shit. I saw this got posted today. This is an old clip, but this is when DSP first got his fucking act off pigler hat. This shit's fucking weak. Hello. I am uh General Bison, I'm here to take over the world with my, my forces of Shadowloo as well as Stream and make some. I can think of another force of uh, people that tried to take over the world that wore a very similar hat. To make some money. <laughs> yes. It's actually, it's, it looks exactly like M. Bison's hat, except I, they didn't have one with a skull, so I got a star. But it looks like M. Bison's hat. Bruh. Like a military hat. It's pretty fun. <laughs> oh, oh, hold on. I gotta do something. I've always wanted to do this. Ready? Of course. Okay, I've always wanted to do that. Dramatic head turn. <laughs> okay. He looks like he's he's M Bison. He's got the fucking M Bison Shadowloo logo on his hat. That's the symbol <gasps> with the wings. That's the Shadowloo symbol from Street Fighter. And he's got the same cape and everything. So he's supposed to be like M. Bison. Yeah, he's supposed to be like, like you know, Shadowloo. He thinks he's the leader of Shadowloo. Yes. 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 <laughs> Uh-oh, Isaac Himmler may come right. back out. So I feel people will want this hat likely when I'm playing Street Fighter because they'll want me to pick Bison when I wear this hat. That's what I'm thinking. I just think it's stupid because people, of course, have to immediately associate everything with something bad with me because they want to be <coughs> dickheads and try to basically spin everything to be toxic. So because I'm wearing a military hat of the style that a ridiculous amount of people in history have worn, including <laughs> M. Bison, a character that I frequently pick in a fighting game once a week, they got to all say it's a Nazi hat. So it's this simple. When I see it, you're banned. I'm not even fucking around. If I see you say it once, you're banned. This is your one warning. If I see it in chat, you are banned. I don't care if you're a regular. I don't care who the fuck you are. If I see it, you're banned. Period. I'm not putting up with your <laughs> bullshit. Trying to be toxic on my fucking stream. I'm having fun here. And all of a sudden, I look at the stream chat. Everyone, oh, Nazis, Nazi Hitler, Nazis. No, how about this? Banned, 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 banned. Gone. Forever. Because I don't put up with your fucking bullshit. Your toxic shit is not welcome on my fucking streams ever. So get the fuck out now. It's not a funny fucking joke. <laughs> it's not. You're out of here. So I'm done with it. If I see it once, you're banned. And you're not coming back. No come begging me in emails. Can I be unbanned? I didn't know. Fuck you, you toxic idiot. You got to bring up fucking Nazis on my stream. Fuck you. You're banned. I can't afford Period. Shit. Now everyone acts like they didn't say it when it's been said for the past 10 fucking minutes. So I can't wait for the first idiot to be fucking banned right now. Alright. Now can I concentrate on the game and have fun? Instead of listening to stupid dumb shit? That'd be great. 
That would be really great. <laughs> no, there's no hat streak. There's no streaks like that anymore. <laughs> Thank you, Swaggins. He says, any talk like that will be banned on site. It must be banned. I'm not putting up with it. Done with it. Gen sip. Sick shit. Fucking people piss me off, man. Piss me off, man. Here we go. So Stuttering Craig reacts to the clip of DSP wearing the bison hat. So let me let me just kind of. Oh, hold on, let me read these real quick. So Delta Gold with the two. Imagine DSP as a sub teacher. Lol, male. Ca oh my god, that shit would be fucking awful. Go to the principal's office. Like he'd be that motherfucker. Waterboy with the two. Welcome to Ban World. That's right, man. Population you. I'll show you this. this. This was on the post show. Adam had left to go get food, and um, let me just play this out because. I, I, I don't know. This is like one of those things where it's like, oof. Yeah, most people have not seen this. Uh, this was a uh, Twitter account that tweeted this out. Let me pull this up. Here we go. All right, here we go. Side Phil appeared on your show, Side Scrollers, was probably one of the most momentous things that you'll always remember. But for me, uh oh, it was Thursday. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's a, <laughs> that's a bison cat. Rackenzie with the two. Yeah. As much as I would love to read that, I'm not getting clipped. App. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. All right. That's Look, exactly what it is. You've seen this in pictures, right? And people say, it's a Nazi cap. Okay. No, it's an M. Bison replica hat that I wear where I played Street Fighter and other stuff. So what did they say? He's a Nazi, right? It's like, come on, man. Once again, um, just notice Blabs, poor Blabs down there. Again, Phil, come on, dude. It looks <laughs> like Street I'm, Fighter and other stuff. Like, you can tell I'm like... What are you doing? You know? <laughs> so what did they say? He's a Nazi, right? It's like, come on. Man. I mean, act fucking act off Pigler and Isaac Himmler are 100% in your past. Once again, Phil, come on, dude. It looks, <laughs> it looks way <laughs> like, come on, dude. You, got, like, you know, I had to do it. I had to bring it up. Look at the amount of times that blabs is like her brain breaks. Like watch the amount of times her eyes, her eyes blink here. You got like. You know I had to do it. I had to bring it on. The show. Th then that's fine. She's like, why the fuck do you have that? But I, having never seen, I've seen pictures of you in that, and yes. it's like, you know, it's one of those things. But so, seeing it now, jeez, jeez, it's it's tough, man. Like, dude, drop the hat. I'm telling you right now, drop the hat, <laughs> drop it. Just get rid of the hat. You don't. Need I don't. To have... I don't wear it often anyway. I really don't. It's very rare when I bring it on because you can tell the trolls want it. That's what they want. They want <sighs> that stupid hat, you know. So. Oh, oh, Travis. Oh, see. So that was an interview that uh, that was part that that most people didn't see um, over at patreon.com slash side scrollers. So like that was that was a for me, that's like one of those moments you go like appeared on your oh. show. So oh, that, that just going to replay. That was like, what? Like, come on. <laughs> the king of hate. That was tough. Dude, it's just like, it never ends. Bill Clinton with the five. Uh, bro's the type to pick up random comments, talk about it for like five minutes plus, then blame the audience for derailing the stream instead of just ignoring. Yep. That is the DSP cycle. How do you spell it? Ah, oh, shit. It doesn't pop up. Here we go, guys. I wonder why people would associate that hat with uh, Nazis. This is what happens when you let the Jews do whatever they want. <laughs> You've let the Jews overrun space, and now look at this. Their greed has had the artifact turn everyone into necromorphs. So now I, the last remaining Nazi, must exterminate them. Hello, Chu. I killed with one shot. Damn. Yes, Jews in space. You'll see what happens. <laughs> Aha. You fight 
me now, Jew. <laughs> you have no legs. <coughs> Give me your money. You've hoarded it for far too long. <laughs> Open your wallet your and give me year. all of your money. You stupid moron. <laughs> you big nose freak. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. oh Isaac God. Heimler. That's my name. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Ah. Uh -huh. And now I'll turn the ovens on. <laughs> Look at this elevator, it's all colored. Special elevator. <laughs> it's for the priest only. It takes you to special quarters with oh his uh my God. his room full of boys. <laughs> Where are they? I know you're hiding them. This is a long ass elevator. This is dead space two, not one. Probably DSP's finest moment. <laughs> oh my god. Bruh. It's just wild. DSP just... <laughs> oh... But yeah, that hat, dude. People associating it with that, it's like, bruh. Weaponized autism with the two. Did they go over the, his Dead Space 2? No, I don't think so. Bill Clinton with the two. I'm glad you and Rich introduced me to DSP. It's, it's just like, it's a never-ending source of fucking content, bro. This motherfucker is hilarious. I got introduced to DSP through Medicare because he made that video on DSP a long time ago. That I watched. That's how I got hooked on DSP. And once you get like down the fucking rabbit hole of DSP troll con, like it's just fucking hilarious. And Waterboy with the five. Oh no, bro. That's ba yeah. And he was wondering why he got banned after that shit. DJ Aftershock with the two. He needs to say ya and Zay like every German. Yeah, he needs to work on his authenticity, but there's plenty of time before Dead Space 2 Remake comes out, so. <laughs> He's got some time before he has to pick up the mantle of Isaac Heimler, <laughs> the last Nazi. <laughs> Bro. Oh my god, dude. He's sick of them hoarding all the money. He needs it for his taxes, guys. Open your wallet and give me <laughs> all of your monies. <laughs> Bruh. That part makes it even fucking better. Oh my god. Yeah, Phil probably would eat the bugs. 100%. He seems like the type. But dude, oh, fuck. I don't know. Do we want to do it tonight? I mean, this is a great meltdown. This is like literally one of DSP's greatest fucking meltdowns. Let's just watch it. Why not? <laughs> 
So I announced during my first stream, the late stream tonight, and I said this on Twitter, and I said this on, you know, posted on my channels, my late stream tonight will no longer be gameplay. DSP Instead, makes I'm wings look normal. This. Okay? We're going to watch this together, and we're going to see, you know, for ourselves. Oh, here it's playing now. We're going to see for ourselves if everything that's been said is true. Okay? There you go. So I announced this. So now it's public that I'm doing this. Okay? So I go on. I go downstairs to have dinner. My wife is pissed. She's very upset. I say, what's going on? Hopefully nothing's happening bad in the house. She says, oh, no. But, you know, I saw that you announced that you're going to watch that their show from this morning. Did you watch it? I said, no, I'm Cat's seen it angry. She said, oh, I did. She was not happy. And she only watched maybe 10, 15 minutes of it. She said she couldn't even continue. She's like, literally, it's a shooting gallery against you. Like, literally, it's just they're just 100% <laughs> reading every super chat. And everyone is a detractor, a known detractor. And they're laughing at you, and they're making fun of you the entire show. And I was like, wow. I don't blame that, them. That is shocking to me, again, because I was led to believe these guys were going to be legit, right? And... Dude, them believing you and being legit are not mutually exclusive things. You did a piss poor job of convincing anyone of your side of the situation. They listened to your ass fucking ramble on for five hours straight, and you couldn't win them over on anything. You didn't have receipts. You didn't want to actually, like, you know, provide any sort of evidence. You just literally said, nah, dude, I don't remember, or, oh, yeah, I've done a lot of bad things in the past, but I, I never did that. Like, you did a piss-poor job of convincing them. Plain and simple, my guy. And apparently, this is not it. This is not what it was supposed to be. You know, I was supposed to just be treated fairly. Now, tr As in, they were supposed to kiss my ass and not look into any of the shit I've ever done. Fairly. He was hoping they weren't going to be prepared for this shit. You know, if you want me to be an object objective, right? That means that you're... They were extremely objective. ...going to listen to answers, but you're not going to do this show after. You're going to... Okay, listen, you, you now you judge for yourself, and maybe you ask for five, ten minutes on your show. What do you guys think? Here's what we think. Okay, moving on. It's a topic for later. He's going to be on again, right? Great. Okay. Now, that's not where it ends, ladies and gentlemen. Because as I said, I was still fully intending that tonight... We were going to sit here and we were going to react to this, which we still might do. But there is a new update, ladies and gentlemen. If you remember, I told you that I emailed Craig last night at 6.18 p.m. saying I had a 50-50 thought that I wanted to send him all the evidence of my innocence. All I needed to know was how often he checked his email. Because I want to be sure if I'm going to send this to him, he's going to check it, he's going to see it, see the evidence, and delete it right away. Right? Yeah, he wants him to delete it right away because then he can't investigate if the image was fucking photoshopped or not. By the way, I already said, I know probably this won't change public opinion, but at least then you'll believe me, right? He emails me back. Are you ready for this one? Are you ready for this? I don't think I was ready for this one when I read it. You ready for this? Here's a response I got at 5.45 p.m. today, two hours ago. I think the show went okay yesterday. We talked about it at length on today's show as a debrief. That's what he called it, a debrief. It was. You shitting on me for two and a half hours is a debrief. Interesting. My debrief was saying, you guys did a great job interviewing me and defending you for two hours against my fans. That was my debrief. And then also apologizing to someone who I harmed in my, my past and apologizing publicly to Review Tech USA. That was my debrief from the show. Your debrief was a two-and-a-half-hour destroy Dark Side Phil show and make money on it. Okay, let's continue. See, I think we all that's what he's upset about, is they made more money than him. I left the interview mentally exhausted and feeling incredibly frustrated. At the end of the day, we want what's best for you. The things <laughs> that are laid out about everything, the WWE mobile game, the bank stuff, it doesn't make sense. There's too much evidence saying it's yours, and your only evidence is you saying it's not. I'm going to address that in a second. I feel like we gave you multiple opportunities to turn this around, but you seem so dug in. Even in the face of insanely detailed evidence, you wouldn't take it. Even with Keemstar coming on, I tried to lay out similarities you feel towards him and the way people feel about you based on things they've seen online, and it was tough. Like, that is, that's not even a point. It has nothing to do with anything, having Keemstar on the show. It has nothing to do with any point at all. Honestly, I'm disappointed. Like I said, we want what's best for you. We very much do. You have to help yourself. 
When you're ready to take that step, I'll <gasps> help you on your journey. You deserve Dude. To level two. <coughs> I know you All right. Guys, it happened. Hold on. Let me see if this thing's plugged in. Fuck. I got it. Finally, bro. Hold on. <coughs> Holy shit. It's about time. Finally got this stupid fucking Palkia to pop up. Let me see if my uh, switch is plugged in. Alright. I finally got the fucking shiny Palkia. Let me see, where is it? There she be. Finally, bro. Holy fuck. All right, why is the Elgato not getting sued? There we go. Okay. Now we're good. All right, man. Dude, it's about fucking time. <laughs> Holy shit. Jesus. Let me drag this window over. Yup, that's the shiny. Fuck yeah. Alright, nice. I want to see if I can get it in a regular Pokeball. I have my Master Ball just in case, but... I like catching Legendaries and regular Pokeballs. Fuck! This is such a sick move. I'm gonna wait till it gets its health at, back up, and then I'll you just use tackle. Cause tackle does a decent amount. No, I'm gonna use tackle. I'm not gonna actually like, attack it with uh, anything decent. Nope. Damn, man. Oh, it hit me crit. Okay. That did fuck all. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna try to use Pound now. Let's see how much that does. Alright, that does like nothing. Cool. Yeah, the homie Mew. Yeah, this is finally the shiny. Let's 
Let's see how much this does. Okay, that's respectable. Alright, I'm gonna chuck a ball on him. Unfortunately, this game isn't like the uh, newer ones where the legendary catch rate's mad fucking easy. Damn, it's just critting me, man. Shit. That shit hits like a fucking truck. Remember it having like this veil of water thing. It's interesting. Cry, oh no. Damn, Crunch is not like, uh, 
flinching him at all. Interesting. Fuck! Damn, bruh! I thought I had it. I want him in a regular Pokeball. Want to just flinch once? Damn. All right. That's a good health range. Fuck, man. There we go. Holly fucking Luya, dude. Fire. Let's go, dude. Hell nah. Add the party. All right, who's getting the boot? Haunter. See ya, bitch. Oh my god, dude. 200 fucking hours. Actually, 215. 215 hours this shit took. Yeah, I have 235 hours of playtime, and as you can see, I was like 21 hours into the game. Hell yes, dude. Beauty. <laughs> Fucking fire. I finally got the shiny Palkia. I can actually finish this game now, which is great. We're going on two years since the game came out that I haven't actually been able to finish it. Fuck, dude. Alright, man. There we go. Finally. Ah, oh, dude, that's that feels good. That's satisfying. It's about fucking time, dude. Holy shit. Oh shit, man. <laughs> Yeah, let me check my uh, actual amount of time in the game. Yeah, played for 235 hours or more. Pokemon Shining Pearl. So, what? What's the math on that? Shit, I can't think. 
so 21, so 214 hours minimum I spent shiny hunting. <laughs> That's like fucking insane, bro. 215 hours. Holy fuck, that's depressing to think about. Nah, the Elite Four is easy in this game, bro. The Elite, dude, the Elite Four in any game is easy. As long as you have a Mew, you're pretty much set because you can teach it whatever. I could shiny hunt the Olga next. I have both versions. I haven't started the Diamond. Oh my god, bro. <sighs> Let's fucking go. Waterboy with the two, congratulations on getting the shiny Palkia. Thanks, man. I'm glad I was able to get into the Pokeball, too. I didn't want to have to use my Master Ball. I never like to use Master Balls in Pokemon games. So, I always try to catch all my legendaries in Pokemon or in Pokeballs because I hate when you go to the Pokemon Center and you don't have, like, a uniform six balls and you have, like, an Ultra Ball when the rest are Pokeballs. It's really fucking OCD, but it, like, it bugs me. Same like I can't have any female Pokemon in my party. Only males. Rakenzie with a two. If you catch it paralyzed, name it Stephen Hawking's. I can't do that to my boy Palkia. Come on now. And Zong Xena with a two. Song low key bumping. Yeah, it's my favorite legendary battle music in Pokemon. Diamond and Pearl just hits different. And Kai with the 100, really appreciate it, man. Holy shit. Thank you so much. Fuck, dude. Yay, finally. You have no idea, man. This shit, I've been like playing it basically for about 30 minutes to an hour every single day trying to do the shiny hunt. So, holy fuck, dude. I was not expecting it to take that long. I don't, I wish I would have kept count how many times I reset, but 215 hours is pretty wild. But really appreciate it, dude. Thanks so much. Daryl's zone with the two. Bad nature. Reset the game. Oh, fuck. Damn it. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and release it, guys. It's not worth keeping. I would get shiny Giratina, but I don't really think shiny Giratina looks good, personally. Oh, you can't hear? Oh, hold on. Yeah, I forgot. When I switch from the Elgato, it fucks it up. Let me uh, change the audio source again. Um, Let me go back a little bit. All right, let me know if you can hear it now. Take that step. I'll gladly help you on your journey. You just... Is that good? It's weird. Like, whenever I switch, like, the Elgato on and off, it kind of fucks with it. All right, cool. Deserve to get to level two... I know you can do it. What does that sound like to you? Does that sound like a neutral party? That email... Sounds like somebody wishing you the best. ...that he went into it with 100% preconceived notions of what the truth was. No, he did not. Based on talking to detractors for two... You failed to convince him otherwise. He heard both sides of the argument. He heard what your detractors had to say. He asked you about them personally. You did not offer an actual explanation to anything or proof backing up anything that you said. So why would he change his mind? Like, of course, he's going to go with the side that has actual evidence. You know, trust me, bro, doesn't fucking work. Two weeks. Right? You, I'll, I will give you full disclosure. I will give you absolutely full disclosure here because I want to be fair. After about a week of him directly talking to the detractors only, he emailed me once and he said, what would you like to see? Or excuse me, let me try that. Take care. Try that again. I misspoke. What would you like me to see? Right? He says, what would you like me to see before your interview? And I sent him my react to my down the rabbit hole video. All right. From last year, which really covers my, my days of street fighter my early days as a YouTuber all the way to 2017 covers it all. And I reacted to all of it. And I essentially said, listen, I'm sorry for a lot of the wrong things I did. I admit that I, they were wrong. Here's some real bad misconceptions about a lot of that. Okay? So I sent him that video because I wanted to basically give him an idea. 
of how there's been a ridiculous amount of misconceptions about me on the internet. And when I address them fairly, you see how they kind of, you know, at least make sense. Not to say that I'm yeah, infallible. Right. I'm having a lot of mistakes. But at the same time, I'm changing for the better, which they <laughs> laughed at during the show yesterday. By because you had an example like less than seven months ago where it's like literally proven you're not changing for the quote unquote better. Like, that's the thing is Phil wants everybody to just like literally accept the fact that, oh, he's a changed man overnight, but has zero fucking evidence of actually doing so. By the way. Oh, change. You're changing. Yeah. It's called human evolution. Do you not understand that someone today is not someone last year, is not someone five years ago, is not someone ten years ago? It's a constant struggle to improve yourself. And when you make a mistake... Would you say that it's your struggle, Phil? You admit you made the mistake and you move on for the better. If you keep making the same mistake a million times, that's a different thing. They laughed at me when I actually... I would like Adam was laughing about change and everything. Ha ha ha. Right? So anyway, this email, essentially what this email says to me, all right? Now keep in mind, the last email I had to him was... Man, I'm glad you guys made a lot of money, and I would like to actually send you the evidence of my innocence, but I need to know how often you check the email because, you know, I, I want to be sure that you're going to get it and delete it right away. Did you hear a response to that anywhere in his email? Did he even mention it? He probably heard enough, bro. He listened to you for five hours. He was done. Like, it's like Keem said, you gave up the opportunity to send any evidence in real time when you basically went down for DDoS or whatever or had, like, this long period after the stream where you could doctor fucking evidence. So it's like you already blew your fucking chance to prove your innocence live on the air. No. Do you want to know why? Because he already believes that I'm guilty. I would, too. He went into the interview believing I was guilty, 100%. He had a preconceived, he talked- I mean, you did nothing to change his mind. That's the problem, Phil. To detractors for two weeks, some of them who he likes, because I hate to tell you this, I really feel like he loves, um, he absolutely loves, like, it's a Gundam, right? He loves I don't it's blame a Gundam. Him. He laughs at it's a Gundam. He thinks it's funny. He kept, so? he kept mentioning it's a Gundam. All right, on the on his shows over the past couple of weeks, that it's a Gundam is a troll of Dark Side Phil. So it's obvious he watches his content, and shit. Right, he loves this guy. Now, why do you think <laughs> he's not just a DSP troll? You fucking troglodyte. He makes a fuck ton of other content as well. Waterboy with the five DSP is definitely one of those guys that will never ever change. Oh no, he will never fucking change. He's too far entrenched in his own fucking lies. Like, he has started to believe them himself. Or he needs to believe them in order to function at this point. Like, he's too far gone. Delta Gold with the two... I just realized his hairline ain't symmetrical. Yup. I don't know, bro. And then you have that wonderful patchy beard, too. I think that he, of all the detractors, what's the first clip that they played in the interview and then they ran out of time? It's a Gundam. He's a fanboy of them, right? Yeah, he's like a damn near million sub YouTuber, bro. Of course they're going to fucking play some shit from him. So anyway, he's been talking with these guys for weeks and weeks and weeks. And all he's listened to is them. I got an honest question for Craig and the side scrollers. How many of my fans have you talked to? How many people who actually watch my content on a daily basis? Keem's trying to do that now. Content? Who would actually tell you why they tune into my content? Wouldn't it have been fascinating to maybe talk to someone and say, Hey, why do you like Phil despite all the hate against him? Why Do you believe the hate? What do you think? Right? Did they do any of that? No, they talked to every detractor. They literally talked to the, the people who benefit the absolute 100% most from me being the villain. And that's all they talked to. Right? There was no evidence they ever went out and actually gave me a fair shake. At all. It was just detractor, 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 detractor. Because all the detractor questions we have to ask Phil. And then say, hey, Phil, what would you like to watch? What, or what, what would you like us to watch? Watch the down the rabbit hole. That's it. That's not a fair take. That you have 99% information from over here. 1% information from over here. Ask me questions. I told you I can't show you the stuff. Right? I'm not going to show you my bank statements or whatever. And a lot of the questions they asked me. I'm going to be honest, we're completely unprofessional because they weren't oh. prepared for the questions. Can I give you an, an example here? When they're on a show and you say, 
Phil, either, either, tell either us subscribe, about five thousand dollars in out. business expenses a month. What five thousand dollars in business expenses? See, this is where he plays dumb. He knows exactly what the fuck they're referring to, but he's going to act like, well, you need to be more specific than that because I, I, I don't know. I have no idea. You know what the fuck they're talking about, Phil. He's trying to play stupid, and it's just irritating. I don't blame them for getting fucking fed up. Well, you know, the ones that everyone knows about. Uh, everyone, what are you talking about? I want to know what, what, the, what is... Are you talking about from my bankruptcy? Oh, yeah, is that what it is? He's like, turn to Adam, is that what it is? Yeah, it's from the, yeah, you know, I need to know. What are you talking about? Right? And and ultimately, they couldn't even answer the question. Yes, it's from the bankruptcy. Well, what from what in the bankruptcy? Is this something that's listed from my tax return? Is this something that's listed on a, a generic form that was filled out, that was read off by the judge during the bankruptcy hearing? I don't even know what you're talking about. I You know, how can I answer a question? When I, I've heard that thrown around a million times. Five thousand dollars a month of business expenses. I don't know. I don't. I never saw that. Dude, do you know who he looks like? This is what he looks like. Hold on. Let me let it start playing. I don't even know what you're talking about. When I went into a bankruptcy <laughs> proceeding, I went in. Okay. <laughs> and what did I do? <laughs> I gave them all the information they needed. My Bro, bankruptcy attorney that's filled what it all out like. properly with all the data. We went in. It, it was presented to the <laughs> bankruptcy people, right? Yes, that was, I guess, a public-facing form that was presented. And apparently somewhere in there, apparently one of the detractors say it says something about $5,000 in business expenses. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, never, ever have Bro, I spent 5000 Bro, it's like uncanny. Games in one month. That's insane. I don't know where that number comes from. I'm not a bankruptcy attorney. I'm not a tax attorney. I'm not a judge who stamped my bankruptcy. That's not my job to know that, where that number came from. No, I don't have $5,000 <laughs> in business expenses every month. I don't know. Then why does it say that on your bankruptcy filing? S.Y.S. Lewis with the 22 months, would he even like their answers? I feel like half of his viewers is truly just... Uh, watching the crap that's it's more than half phil has a very small group of core fans that will support him literally through anything it's just i don't know he really thought he could go in there and convince them what he was hoping for is another softball interview like the quartering gave him which gave him a temporary boost in popularity because the quartering did zero research on phil before going into the interview and just kind of like interviewed him about cancel culture Versus like all of his drama and shit. And what I was thinking and what I think Phil was expecting with the side scrollers interview is kind of the same thing. They weren't going to go in and like actually spend the time looking into his history, learning about all the trolling shit. He thought this was going to be like some softball puff piece interview that he was going to use to like gain a little bit of temporary relevance. And well, it turns out both of them came extremely prepared and they called him on his shit. They didn't just fucking believe every word that came out of his mouth, and now he's crying foul because of it. Delta Gold with a two, bro. I'm dead. Dude, he does look like Droopy Dog. As long as you know with the two, don't do Droopy dirty like that, bro. Like, the way his, like, fucking, like, I don't even know what you call that, like, fluid sacks of his face, like, they're puffing out like a dog's snout. No. Oh, okay. Uh, what I can tell you is, it was 100% kosher according to the bankruptcy judge. Because, again, because the trolls were harassing everyone involved with that bankruptcy so badly, I had to go in and I had to do, just listen to this, hours and hours and hours of work explaining away all the transactions that I did related to my business, not even related to my, like, I was explaining everything to, so they would understand all of it. This is not something they have to do with anyone else, but because so many people were, were basically contacting the bankruptcy judge and saying, Phil's, Phil's a liar, Phil's a fraud, all this. I had to They're go through wrong. all this. It was insanely stressful. It was one of the most complicated bankruptcies probably they've ever done, all right? Certainly was the only one where someone ever called in and impersonated one of my debtors, all right? Certainly, okay? But the point is, you got me in the interview. The question is, explain the $5,000, 
Okay, what five thousand dollars? You know they what they were talking about. What they meant. So I try to say I don't know. Is it maybe the mortgage? Is it you know because that because I don't know because my house is also where I work out of. Is it medical expenses? I don't know. Oh, he Why doesn't would you know. Ask me this question. That's a stupid question to ask someone in an interview. Like I'm going to have the answers to this question, but th- to them that's he's a valid completely question. ignorant so to it, guys. Right? You know, and some of the other things. Come the on, bank dude. Statement. How would he know? I actually, the thing is with these bank statements, all right? I talked about it today on my show earlier. I'll talk about it again. You can say there's all this circumstantial evidence that says it's yours. Correct. And you can also say there's circumstantial evidence that it's not mine. Like the fact that there's all these transactions that are crazy big transactions for pets. So that is DSP's only quote unquote evidence that the transactions are not his is that they spend a lot of money at a pet store. Dude, you can easily spend a hundred dollars a week at a pet store. If you buy like canned food, fresh, like refrigerated treats, new toys, kitty litter, beds, like dude, it's so easy to spend a hundred bucks at Pet Smart. I'll go to like buy um like Apollo's food alone is like a hundred bucks a bag. But yeah, like treats toys all of that shit's very expensive and i guarantee you phil and cat baby the shit out of jasper and probably give him canned food gourmet like refrigerated treats and all that sort of shit so like literally his only evidence is i would never spend a hundred dollars at a pet store that is literally the only evidence he has to counter the fact that his social security number is attached to the bank account The bank account transactions all take place at local restaurants on the days he stated on Twitter that he went to those restaurants. You know, the total wine right by his house, businesses right by his house, you know, days that he said like, oh, my bills are due. You know, there was a payment going out that day as well. So not only would this person have to literally, you know, get DSP's social security number, This person would then have to spend tens of thousands of dollars over the course of several months at a bunch of different businesses right by DSP's house on the same days that DSP also spent money in those places in order to fake this shit. But, you know, Phil would never spend $100 at PetSmart. That's a great explanation of why those transactions aren't his, which is what you'll hear. When I have one cat, one freaking cat, not 10, not 20, not 100 dogs. I have one cat. How am I spending like $100 a week on pet supplies? What am I buying him? Golden pet fucking cat food? Like, what are you talking about, right? That's just as circumstantial to prove my my innocence as the things that prove my guilt. I already said it didn't. And again, I explained it to them and they had like, they didn't understand what I was saying. When it comes to those mobile, apparently not even mobile, it was iTunes transactions, right? They're saying, here's a bank account. Dude, iTunes is where you buy fucking mobile game microtrans. Like, now he's just going to play fucking stupid. Right? And in that bank account, it's... Bro, this shit is so fire. I'm battling, like, some random Pokemon with my Palkia, and every time I use him, he, like, sparkles now. That shit's fucking dope. Showing that there's these transactions coming out of iTunes. And I'm like, okay. And? Right? And, like, the, the accusations against me from my detractors are that... Every day I make a bunch of money on my streams. People tip me. And that money goes into my PayPal account. And then immediately I go and I spend it all on mobile game. Well, if I did that, it would be coming out of my PayPal account, not out of my bank account. Why would I be doing transactions on money I made today on stream coming out of my bank account? My money doesn't go there. Think about how dumb it would be if I'm making all this money. It's going to my PayPal. Then I train. No, Phil. What's happening? This is very easy to explain. What's happening is you're an addict. So what happens is is you blow through your existing PayPal balance. And then, because you don't have any money left in your PayPal, you're then forced to start spending the money that you already transferred to your checking account. So you're emptying out your PayPal account first, and then you're tapping into your checking account funds once the PayPal balance has been exhausted. That is not fucking hard to understand. And he's going to try to act like it's some, like, insane conspiracy that would never fucking happen. It's a very easy and simple explanation. Lord Pothead Investor with the two. I'm surprised there's no one. Wait. 
I'm surprised no one's tried to follow D. Yeah, that'd be weird. That's actually illegal, so I wouldn't recommend that. But yeah, I am kind of surprised people haven't tried it. Transfer the money from my PayPal to the bank account, right? And then I take the money out of the bank account. I'm losing money. When you transfer money from your PayPal to a bank account, there's all these fees involved. Why would I even do that? Because that you're were, addicted. You know, it doesn't make any sense. What they're saying, it logically makes no... It doesn't make sense to spend tens of thousands of dollars on fucking WWE champions in the first place, bro. No sense. But again, everything that they say that's circumstantial, correct? Circumstantial, right? Can also be countered circumstantially. Yeah, by the fact you claim you don't spend $100 at the pet store. That is the only circumstantial evidence you have. That's it. And you even previously admitted these transactions were yours in the past. Now you're changing your story to say they're not yours. Because the truth is, when Craig wrote this email and he says, we have all this evidence, there's no evidence. There's there plenty of evidence. There is circumstantial evidence. There is no evidence without a shadow of a doubt of anything these people have said about me whatsoever. None. It doesn't exist. It's not provable. Because it's not true. So here's the thing, and here's where sadly this entire thing falls apart, all right? When they interviewed me yesterday, they were interviewing me from the perspective of I'm already guilty, they already believe it, and all they want to do is hit me with the question where I'm finally either going to <clears throat> reveal something that I didn't intend to and show that I'm guilty, or else I'm just going to confess. Adam was even saying it multiple times during the show to Craig he says Craig it sounds like you're trying to get him to confess and that's actually not right because he was he was but dude I thought they weren't fair to you I mean right there you just confirmed that they were being fair to you and looking out for you that even the co-hosts were calling each other out on their shit when needed if anything that just makes them look even better in the situation that they were still willing to give you a fair shake even though you claimed that they were convinced you were guilty so, yeah, I don't think that's the own you think it is, Phil. Don't think that's quite the own you think it is. I don't know, dude. It's just, this shit's really fucking sad. Phil is such a walking fucking L. Wanted me to conf you could tell from where the interview was going by the end. Did you notice... Did you really notice that during the interview, they were only harping on the 100% questions, right? That could not essentially really be like debunked without exposing myself, correct? There's easily debunkable questions that could have been asked. None of those were asked. It was all the ones that the detractors have harped on because all they've done is talk to my detractors for two weeks. That was not a fair and balanced interview that was well-researched. Yes, that was an it was. That was. All the tough questions right up front. Then get Keemstar in here, which tell me what that did. Did absolutely nothing except gave them a popularity boost to have a big YouTuber. You know? You're the one who said you were fine with Keem coming on. They made sure even in the middle of Keem being there that you were okay with it. Bro, you're the one who agreed to have Keem come in. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know what I'm saying? All this is just bullshit. I've had, I, you know, you have it up to a certain level, and it's like, I gave them the benefit of the doubt that this was them being objective. They were not. By the time that I got on their interview yesterday, they were 100% sold that I was guilty, and this was a phishing interview to try to get me with a gotcha thing, or, you know, got him, got him right there, there's the evidence, now you're guilty, now he'll admit it publicly on our show and we'll blow up, <clears throat> or to just get me to admit that I was doing it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, all right, listen to me. It's not true. And oh, I'm not yeah. going to admit something that's not true. There's a lot of things that I've done wrong in my life. A lot. I'm not going to admit things I haven't done. It doesn't matter how much circumstantial evidence there is. This would never, ever, ever fly anywhere legally at all because it's all bullshit. It's all circum. I think it would fly legally because, dude, in a legal scenario, they can just audit your fucking bank records. And if it lines up, then you're fucked. If this ever did get taken to court, DSP would have to provide his bank records and then they would be examined by, like, and become public knowledge. So, 
Yeah. Circumstantial nonsense, okay? This email I got from Craig literally word for word is saying, I never trusted you, okay? And that's why he even says, I, does he even say, oh yeah, I, I, give me, send me the evidence. Doesn't want it. <laughs> he doesn't want the evidence. You know? He's moving on from this shit, bro. Unlike you, he has the ability to move on to other topics. No, he doesn't want what would have actually proven, right? That's, that's absolutely ridiculous that he's supposed to be a neutral party. And he just doesn't care. He doesn't want the evidence, you know. Instead, I just, I believe everything the detractors have said. Sorry. Uh, so anyway, you know, I actually did respond to him. And it, my response was, well, I'm broadcasting tonight on DSP Reacts. I'm directly reacting to this. Watch if you like. I figured at least want to know what I have to say about it. And he says, okay, buddy, hope it's wildly successful. And I said, you know, I appreciate that, but I'd just rather be playing games or chilling with my audience than wasting time on this. But now my hands are tied. I got to do something. Right? I have to address it. Twitchy says, oh, just play games then. As Adam said yesterday, you do you and fuck everyone else. Good luck. Yes, because you would like that. Yeah, he's, he wants like what's best for you, bro. I don't think he was lying when he says he hopes you, like, get your shit together and, you know, things work out for you. That Craig dude seems like a genuinely good guy. And Phil is incapable of that. And instead, he'll burn a bridge because he's upset that they got more fucking super shekels than he did not say anything and just take the punches and you get you completely benefit out of this whole thing that's what you would like you're like everyone to think right that you were the big innocent guy you did the great job the pat on the back he did right? do a great job no you didn't he lets you talk for five hours phil it's your fault you didn't manage to convince anybody in that time period in fact you dug yourself deeper into the hole of lies you went into it in the completely wrong fashion. Nope. You listened to the wrong people for two weeks, and I answered every question. Gave you five and a half hours of my time. Who else would have done a five and a half hour interview for you with your little podcast? And I'm not. Oh, so now busy, he's going to flex too, sub count. But who in their right mind would have done a five and a half hour interview for you? And you went into it completely. Listen to this fucking dude. He's flexing his fucking ego and shit. Oh my god, bro. Phil is just digging himself deeper and deeper into the fucking hole. Oh man, I thought I was being interviewed fairly. Your your actions directly today on your show and in this email prove you never did. You never had an intention of giving me a fair shake. A professional would have said the interview's done. Maybe we do a five, ten minute decompress session today about it. We move on. We do our Mario Kart, whatever. Maybe we'll have Phil back in the future for more. Now, oh, keep riding the money gravy train that we just got from all the detractors that's literally what he's done that's disgusting what was i talking about yesterday i was talking about something i like to call on the internet it's called a misery broker it's someone who literally on when someone has a bad day phil you're a misery broker because you always plead poverty 24 7 to try and milk as much money out of your fans as possible they have a good day they make money off of talking about other people's misery you have you make money talking about your own. Shut the fuck up. Literally turned the Side Scrollers podcast, which used to be the show that was supposed to be the number one gaming and entertainment podcast on planet Earth, and you turned it into the Dark Side Phil shit show where you profit from my misery. Wah. You, you destroyed your own show. That's right, man. They destroyed wow. their show. Amazing. Because now, right now what you've got, you've got temporary popularity. Based on the negativity being thrown towards me. Congratulations. I hope you enjoy it. You're making a lot of money. That's for sure. Congratulations. Right? I certainly haven't seen any benefit like that from this. Nor was that my intention. But it sure seems that way when you're doing an entire show today. And you're still rolling into the gravy train. Right? So. That's what he's upset about. They're making more money than he did off of this thing. He thinks he's entitled to the fucking money. That's what this shit all comes down to. DSP can't stand the fact that people are more successful and more liked than he is. He's like this sad little either, kid either, that's either desperate to be popular. Get the fuck out. Kunama with the 21 months. Really appreciate it, man. DSP. Me, 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 me. Yeah, basically, bro. As in. Open your wallets and give me all of your monies. You know, hey. You be you. And again, with the hilarious st stab here, we want to get you to level two. You want to get me to level two? You want me to be like you? 
You want me to stoop to your level. So you want me... I think I'd much rather be a Craig than a DSP, personally. To have someone on a show, interview them, and the next day do an entire show shitting on them for profit. That's what you want me to do. Phil, you're shitting on them right now for profit. Shut the fuck up, you absolute hypocrite. You want me to be like you. I will never be like you. That's not me. I've never done that. And I ne- yeah, he. you will never be like Craig. He's successful. He has a good family. He's got friends around him. And he's doing what he enjoys on YouTube because he can. You will never be like him. Never will. I don't make that shit, right? I don't. I'm not, you know, I'm not Keemstar. I'm not going to. I don't. Again, why was Keemstar on the show yesterday? Because you said he, he could come on. Right? You wish you could be him. Why do you else you think he's on the show? That you guy wish, is fucking rep- Dude, that is such projection. Phil wishes he could be Keem. That's why he hates Keem so much. He's fucking jealous. Prehensible. Everyone knows it. Everyone knows the guy has hurt far more people than he's ever helped. And and False. any moment that he pretends like he's doing something to help someone, it, it, look how he's doing it. Oh, I'm helping Wings and Boogie by paying them money to beat each other up in a boxing match. That's that's insane. Let's you're out of your mind. Why both Boogie and Wings are consenting adults who want to take part in it? Why the fuck are you, like he's so ass blasted that other people are out there doing bigger things than him? Like you can just sense the jealousy so much, bro. Phil is a miserable, washed up loser whose entire fucking life is based on his online presence, and he can't stand the fact that people don't fucking like him. Right? And you want to be like that. That's who you want to be. You're telling... Every content creator wants to be like Keemstar, you fucking dunce. Me. That's how you need to be successful. That's how the internet works. No, 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 no. That's how this low level of internet works. And the thing is, there's a monstrous amount of people who are successful doing really immoral, underhanded things on the internet. Okay? Tons. And what you essentially are telling me is that's what you think I should be, and that's what you sure as hell want to be. Well, go ahead, and you can be that. Leave me the fuck out of it. I want nothing to do with being that. I never do. I just want to play games, talk to my audience, have a good time, and, and have nice, chill, meaningful, good time. I said yesterday, meaningful content for my... Uh, what does that mean? Well, you know, when people tell me that... When they came to my show, they actually felt relaxed. They had a good time that day. They had a bad time. They come watch my content. They had a conversation with me. And, you know, they, to them. The only way you'll have a conversation with them, Phil, is if it comes attached to a super chat or a fucking tip. Shut the fuck up. That didn't even click that I said that. Meaningful content. Yeah, meaningful. You know, like I didn't shit on someone for four hours and make them look like a villain on the internet. And then I made a bunch of money doing it. Cause no, you just villainize your audience for not giving you money for four hours. You know, I don't care about hurting people. Like, apparently you did today. You know? What else can I say? It's a it's a vile business being on YouTube. And what's hilarious is something that Adam kept saying yesterday, right? Something that Adam kept saying yesterday that was very, 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 very interesting. He kept saying, dude, it's the internet. It's not real. It's the internet. It's not real. It's the internet. No, 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 no. For some people, the internet is their life. The internet is my life, dude. That's fucking sad, Phil. You need to get the fuck off the internet then. If any human being ever says the internet is my life at age 40, you need to get the fuck off. That's scary. That's actually fucking scary, bro. The last place that you should base your life around is the fucking internet. Holy shit. Like, you look at some of the biggest internet, like, personalities. They have friends. They have family. They do shit offline. Phil is a terminally online man-child. Dude, that shit is so fucking depressing. That is so fucking unhealthy. He needs to get the fuck off the internet, bro. No one should ever get to that fucking point. Especially at age 40, dude. That's just, that's dangerous. You generation with a five, look up DSP tries it the creatures he's mad they had more viewers playing spongebob uh how long is it because i gotta hop off in a second let me check like this is my job six days a week full time i'm in this office this is it this is you know how i make my living you think it's all jokes because you don't make your living on the internet i do 
That's, you know, no, it should not be allowed. Maybe the internet is bad. Oh, that's just how the internet is. Oh, no, yeah, we can check the internet it out. shouldn't be like that. The internet shouldn't be people just shitting on each other for profit. How do you not understand that we can aspire to be better? That we can aspire for something good or something better than what we have, this shit show. We don't want an endless shit show on the internet. Right? That's right. DSP is going to single-handedly change the entire nature of the fucking internet, guys. That's an extremely realistic expectation. I went on your show... And I decided I'm going to actually grow and reach out and do things. You decided to shit on me for a whole show afterward. Like, do you see the discrepancy there, the difference? I grew. You went went the opposite direction for profits. But it's fine. Because I can't make anyone be a better person. I can't make anyone, you know, have a moral compass. Sorry. Oh, he's going to cry, can't. guys. All right? The, the whole funny part, and I'll, I'll end it like this, and then if you want, we'll do some reacting to actually the show here. Did anyone, literally, did anyone on that show go into it with an actual thought in their mind that I was innocent? That's the question. Because if they did, I feel like it would have went a lot different. I don't think Adam had a preconceived notion about you at all because he kept saying I didn't really look into this shit. He was just calling you out on your inconsistencies in real time. So, no, you just did a piss poor job of convincing anyone of anything. You provided no proof, no evidence, literally said, oh, I forgot, contradicted yourself constantly. Like, what else are people supposed to take away from that? You sounded like a disingenuous pathological liar. Plain and simple, bro. No one, you can't blame anyone else for how people perceive you when you're the one representing yourself. Differently. I do. I feel like if you actually went into it saying, hey. Phil is innocent. I'm going to believe everything he says at face value without challenging him. Yeah, then you could see how he's innocent. Phil was innocent or p could be innocent. See? Right? That's what he wanted. He wanted them to assume that he was innocent right off the bat. Then it would have been fine. That, that never happened. Never one. It, that wasn't the intention. You could tell that. You could tell that because I already had said I wasn't going to say much or anything new. Right? At all. I was. Then what was the point of the shit? If you're not going to say anything new or anything of substance, why did you even agree to the shit? Because you thought they were going to come dramatically unprepared and it was going to be a softball ass kissing interview like the quartering gave you previously. That's what you were hoping for. That's not what this shit was. And you got your ass beat. It, wasn't. it was just going to be stuff that I've already talked about and reiterated. Because I don't have anything new to say because I'm innocent, but I can't expose myself. And then when I finally tell them, all right, I'll do it. I'm, I'm thinking of doing it. Oh, I don't want it anymore. Oh, okay. So you didn't care at to begin with. I mean, let's be honest. You didn't care to begin with. He was ready to move on, you dipshit. You should have done it in the moment. Or else you would, you know. There, it, there was no integrity there. All right. There was no integrity there. Huskers fan, you're already banned. From like, DSP is so terrified of, like, his fucking... WWE champion's name being put out there because of my family would be in danger. But then he literally goes and says, oh, my wife has an active restraining order. She filed against an ex-boyfriend. You can Google it and find all the details. Bro, I think the fact that your wife has a restraining order against an ex-boyfriend is a little bit more revealing and dangerous information to have out there than your fucking username on iTunes. And that's assuming that Craig fucking shares it, which he said he wasn't. He was just going to look at it himself and not show anyone else. I mean, this is what's so mind-blowing about this fucking guy. It's just incredible people believe this fucking retard. From DSP Gaming, now you're banned from here. Congratulations. Real winner today. Give me monies! I don't know, man. DSP is just, he's something else. I don't know. I got to hop off. Oh, wait, no, we got to watch this last video real quick. Before I hop off, we'll watch this two minute video. Then I got to hop off because I need to go to sleep. It's fucking poor. Oh, yeah. it has been paid for by the Kojima World Order. So, so there's a thousand viewers on a SpongeBob game. Well, you know where the intelligent people are tonight, right? The intelligent people are watching fucking uh, Dark Side Phil. Thousand viewers watching SpongeBob. <laughs> oh my god. 
<sighs> yeah, maybe I should play SpongeBob. Maybe then I'll get some viewers, right? Because that's what people want to see, apparently. Fucking SpongeBob. These people are retarded. Yeah, the thing that makes him so mad at Craig, too, is the fact that he is, the, like, a fanboy of Craig. Like, he was a huge fan of Screw Attack back in the day, and Craig. So he feels, like, betrayed on two fronts, kind of. Like, this is a guy he looked up to for, like, over a decade. And he just completely fucking destroyed him. <laughs> SpongeBob isn't even pertinent anymore. Sponge, what? Pertinent? SpongeBob is old. What? Why are you watching someone? I don't care who it is. Why are they watching me play SpongeBob? What the fuck's your problem? I don't care who's playing it. I don't care if Jesus was playing SpongeBob. You still shouldn't watch it. It doesn't so matter. Do it's stupid. Jordan will literally shit himself. Great. Look what you did. Yeah, I'll just. Here, hold on. There we go. Look at that. You're right back to where you right back to where you were. Oh. <laughs> Can you relax, please? Can we play this game for the for the stream for the uh, fourteen thousand people? <laughs> wow, why are you? What are you guys doing here right now? Watching this shitty game. Well, we know where all the intelligent Rather, people are. Right? You know where all the intelligent people are tonight. <laughs> Ow! They'll be watching SpongeBob. All right. The following announcement has been paid for by the. Oh my god! Like Phil is just his own worst fucking enemy. He just runs his mouth constantly. All right, guys, I need to hop off. Have a wonderful. Tuesday everybody appreciate y'all hanging out I'm glad I was able to catch the shiny on stream that is you have no idea how fucking happy I am to be done with that shit holy fuck but yeah have a great day tomorrow everybody and I will talk to y'all later peace out guys